Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Life Special number 259, recorded Tuesday, September 29th, 2015. The Google Nexus announcement. Hi, everybody. Leo Laporte here, and we're getting ready to go to the live stream for uh, Google's 2015 Nexus announcement. We've got a great panel to help uh, dissect what Google announces on stage today. And frankly, to make it a little bit more exciting, since it seems like the rumors have broken every possible angle on what, <laughs> on what Nexus is going to say, how Google's going to say. Joining me right now, Gina Trapani from MakerBase and ThinkUp and longtime friend and Android lover. Hello, Gina. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so glad you could be here. Are you? Did you go back home or are you still in San Diego? I'm home. I'm home. I spent a, a lovely 10 days in San Diego, which was awesome. Uh, but my phone is like slowly becoming less and less functional. I'm losing like touch responsiveness in the bottom of the screen. <laughs> so you're ready. <laughs> and I'm ready. I'm ready. I, you know, I try not to participate too fully in the like the rampant consumerism of our industry, but mama needs a new Nexus. So I'm very <laughs> excited about today. <laughs> we uh, expect, you know, I'm sitting here with my Nexus 6, which is a Google Fi phone. So, uh, and the only phone that supports Google Fi. So as uh, like you, I'm kind of wondering if we're going to have uh, two more, at least two more Google Fi compatible phones. The rumors are there will be a, both a big one and a little one. The little one, which is not that little 5.2 inch Nexus uh, 5X will be from LG. This is, again, the rumor mill, but the rumor mill seems to know everything. And yeah, the, uh, worst kept secret ever. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you, really, you really appreciate how hard Apple works to keep this stuff quiet. When I mean, literally, it's like, Revelation after revelation. Uh, and then there'll be a uh, Huawei version of, I guess, in a way to replace the larger uh, Nexus 6. It'll be called the uh, 6P and uh, 5.7 inches, though, which is, what do you think, Gina? You use the, the Google Nexus 6. It's This feels a little too big. I'm actually using the one, I'm, I'm still in the OnePlus One, and oh, I feel are. like the OnePlus One is a little too big, and the reason why I skipped on the Nexus 6 is that it was just a little too big for me, and so I'm planning on doing the LG, the smaller LG, just because I think I'm ready to go back to maybe a little bit of a smaller phone. I want a phone I can slip into my pocket without feeling like, you know, it's going to snap in half, or, you know, I want to be able to use it one-handed on the subway. I'm in, uh, you know, I'm in New York City now, so I'm actually kind of going to go back in size. I know a lot of people love their big phones, and I'm really happy that it sounds like we're going to have choices. Also, of course, a big part of uh, this will be Marshmallow, the newest version of Android, and these will be the first two phones to feature Marshmallow. Joining us now, Russell Holly from Geek.com, also a major Android fanboy. Is that fair to say, Russell? Good morning. That is fair to say. I'm actually with AndroidCentral.com now. Oh, that's right. Of course. I, sorry, I'm I'm back in time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I guess that that really qualifies you as an, as an Android expert, that's for sure. Well, we're glad you could be here, Russell, uh, li up a little bit early uh, to cover this. What do you expect? What are you looking for today? I, I, you know, we've seen so much in the way of the rumor mill for the uh, the new Nexus phones, but the thing that I'm really interested in, uh, you know, aside from that, is hopefully getting some of the the new information about the Chromecast because um, my Chromecast has been kind of lagging for a while. I'm, I've been hoping for an update for a bit. Yeah, we expect to see an, a Chromecast 2 it kind of looks like a hockey puck. It's round. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll have some new features, I guess. Better Wi-Fi is what uh, it looks like is the main feature. Because And this is hard to put features in a Chromecast. It's really mostly what it is is an interface to your smartphone or tablet. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a capture box. And, and so that it would be cool to see just, you know, better connectivity and better support for that kind of stuff. Gina, is there anything else you think that uh, we'll we'll hear? I mean, uh, we've heard rumors of a new tablet, perhaps. Uh, I, you know, I'm, honestly, I'm not sure. I think I've been so I've been so focusing on the phone. You, you just uh, want the phone. I just want the phone. I just I just want my new phone. I'm ready yeah. to order. I've got the store loaded up here. I'm ready to go. Uh, so I'm not sure. I, you know, I, I've kind of, I'm, I'm not a big tablet user, you know, these days. And part of it is that I've had just a big phone that's somewhere near a tablet. So, but hey, what I would love to see, I'd love to see a new smaller tablet, yeah. you know, in the seven, the seven range. 
Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. I think I'd be pretty happy with two new phones and a Chromecast. Would you be um, uh, interested in Fi if if your phone supported it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Although I don't know, I'm I'm a little, and you, you might be able to update me on this. I'm a little concerned that it's going to mess with my Google Voice or Hangout setup that feels that's working right now and feels slightly fragile. I know that there was like if you signed up for Fi, uh, it would mess with your account. Although maybe that's changed. So I yeah, you know, it, I mean it I, takes over sure. your account. In fact, once you have Fi, you only have two choices. You can get a new number, in which case your Google Voice number will be terminated with Eek. extreme prejudice. Or you can give it your Google Voice number, in which case you lose a few things, like the ability to record. What I didn't know, and I learned, I'm ashamed to say, only recently, if you go to the very bottom of the Fi page, you know what, John, I think I do want an HDMI connector. Uh, you can go to Google Voice and still do a lot of the things. Hey, we're ready to go. They have just, uh, Sundar Pichai taking the stage. They've just begun the event. Let's listen uh, in. I've been spending time uh, receiving the Indian Prime Minister at the great excitement in the Valley. Uh, celebrating the Moon Festival with family and friends. I was trying to catch the blood moon a couple of nights ago. Uh, all I saw was the regular white moon. Uh, <laughs> but thanks to YouTube, I think I saw the real deal. Hopefully you all had better, better luck. Pachai, now uh, the CEO of Google. Talk about products, uh, especially around computing, which is near and dear to my heart. Computing is the foundation of a lot of things we do. It's how users interface with technology. And for us, the way we do it is by investing in large open ecosystems, platforms, which we build with everyone, and that helps us do this at scale. And the scale at we which- You should mention that Mike Elgin is at the event. That's why he's not covering with us, but he'll have kind of a first Just over a year ago at Google I.O., we announced Android had 1 billion 30-day active devices across the world. Uh, fast forward to today, uh, we now have 1.4 billion 30-day wow. wow. devices, which we see in Android around the world. That's pretty so amazing. So we've added 400 million uh, active devices, and the momentum is happening around the world. Especially Growth has slowed, economy. though, a little bit, hasn't it? In many, many places. Mm. I guess once you get to like 1.5 billion, it's Vietnam, hard to find new Android users. Android has literally doubled in the last year. And what's exciting about this is, in most of these cases, these are people who are adopting a smartphone for the first time. So we are well on our way to bringing the next billion users online. Uh, we care about making sure there is entry-level, high-quality, affordable smartphones. This is for what distinguishes, well. of course, Android from Apple. Uh, which is why Apple we do Android is, One. We they own the, the low end. To many countries. Apple's not even interested. We recently in launched it in Turkey about a month ago, and General Mobile's Android One phone has been the best-selling phone uh, in Turkey since then. We see the same momentum here in the U.S. as well. If you look at education, by the end of this year, there'll be more Chromebooks than every other device combined in U.S. schools. And we're beginning to see the same momentum the outside of the Chromebook U.S. as well. Eclipsed Windows in fact, in the U.S., the uh, we were looking at data in, in September. Every single day, there are 30,000 new Chromebooks which get activated. So 30,000 new kids for the first time, many of them for the first time, get access to computing in their schools. We want to serve companies as well. We announced Android for Work uh, about a year ago. We announced Android for Work uh, about a year ago, and already in the U.S. there are over 10,000 companies which have either which are either testing, partially deployed, or fully deploying uh, Android for Work. Uh, these include important institutions like the World Bank, U.S. Army, Guardian Life. What is Android for Work, Russell? I don't. Uh, this brings us to today. Uh, Android for Work is a lot of uh, enterprise applications that work. Try to push the you know, state of the art and push the next generation of with everything. It's the, like the Google services for that, work, uh, we just with, uh, with things like the SLA agreements and stuff. Is, Got so it. So that we can better, work together. Reliability. We build the next version of the operating system. We build the hardware along with our ecosystem partners, <laughs> so that we can guide the ecosystem forward. And we do that with our Nexus devices. You'll hear from the team about it today. This year, we've gone a step further. You know, we have a more comprehensive lineup. We've thought about the range of what's possible. And more importantly, we've thought about how do we take it to market. We've uh, thought about not just the purchase of these devices, the post-purchase experience. And you'll hear about that from the team. In addition, we've had a Pixel team whose goal has been slightly different. Their goal has been to build aspirational devices so that they can guide the ecosystem into newer areas. There's a Pixel team. We did Pixel team. for the Chromebook to show what's possible 
for the Chromebook model with the touchscreen, new touchpads, and more recently, even USB-C. The same team has been hard at work for their first Android device, focused on productivity. Remember that before Pachai ascended to the, the heights C, as CEO of Google, he today. Uh, was assigned to the Android team with the departure of, course, of uh, Andy Rubin. And tablets. Yeah, he ran Android and Chrome at the same time. And he time. ran Chrome OS. In fact, I remember talking with him when Chromebooks first came out as a skeptic, and he did a pretty good job of convincing me of the value of the Chromebook. So he's got real love for both Nexus, Android, and Chromebook. We do it using Chrome Chromecast, and it bets on the phone as the center of your experience. And the Chromecast team has a set of exciting updates for you as well. So in this multi-screen world, it's even more important for us as Google to do the hard work so that the user experience is simple and delightful for users. And increasingly, we do that by doing hard and deep computer science, deep learning, to make sure the end user experience is, is much easier on users. You'll see machine learning at work on either on Now on Tap or Google Photos and a few other examples you'll hear about today. All of this matters to users only in the form of the and user experience they see. They care about the applications and services they use. And so we obviously work with many, many developers to bring all of this together. And Google plays the ecosystem which brings all of this together for users. And that is working at scale as well. I'm excited to announce that today, Google Play is now over 1 billion 30-day active users. Huh. So the model is wow. again working at scale. Very cool. And this ecosystem is what makes everything we do possible. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the team uh, to talk about uh, what's up ahead. I know there have been some rumors, uh, but hopefully we have a few things <laughs> to share with you and tell the end to end story. Acknowledging that, so with that there's really nothing, no Dave surprise Burke. here. Hopefully we'll have something that you don't already know. Uh, One more <laughs> thing would be nice. One more thing would be good. Yep. Thanks, Sundar. Nexus represents the latest in mobile technology directly from Google. It's the most advanced Android software built into innovative hardware developed jointly by Google and our device partners. A Nexus is Android as we've designed it, showcasing the very latest and best in material design and the newest Android software. And He's today, Moto 360. I'm super excited to announce not one. Interesting. That, no, that's the Huawei. Is that the Huawei? No, that's the Moto 360. The lugs are different. Nexus 5X and the you, Nexus You are. <laughs> so an let's expert. start with the Nexus 6 <laughs> No, I believe 60. that's the 360. Now, I've been using this device for several weeks, and I'm absolutely <laughs> loving it. That's the 5X. That's we partnered the, with Huawei to create the first the ever full metal bodied Nexus. This is going to be the flagship, it's right? It's crafted from mm -hmm. aeronautical grade the size differences aren't aluminum. Great. And the phone is only 7.3 Did he just say aluminium? He did. And it has beautiful diamond cut edges and a sculpted back that make it feel really comfortable to hold. It looks way nicer than the, the render. The phone is available in three yeah. colors. Yeah. Frost white, aluminium, and graphite. <laughs> We're just going to stick now, with that, aren't we? the Nexus 6P <laughs> has an incredibly vibrant 5.7 inch WQHD AMOLED display. slightest accent. I think he comes AMOLED by aluminium. Uh, and we've honestly. maximized the area of the screen to be 74% of the overall device. So you get an amazingly immersive experience without the phone Direct shot at too Apple big. here. That's unusual this for is a Nexus. Yeah, yeah, Apple's a big bezel phone, machine. And not quite as big as that 5.5 inch five on the right device. was, of course. Now, inside, the phone packs the latest 64-bit processor powered by an almost 3.5 amp hour battery. The brand new USB Type-C port Brings fast Wade County in the chat room says the, the gold Nexus is Japan can only. Charge the fully in about half the time mm. of an iPhone 6 Plus, and of course, I would love the Type C, C connector. Much more convenient, Gotta get all new cables. Plus. So nice. So no I really like it though, up. and I'm hoping they'll so use the full notice, features. The you know, the USB 3.1 features. features of the for yeah, I mean that's part of the spec that they announced with the now Marshmallow the developer preview. So the best camera we've ever put into a Nexus device, a 12.3 megapixel Sony imaging sensor with enormous 1.55 micron pixels. That's bigger the than uh, anybody I know of. Stunning images, even in the toughest of lighting conditions. Bigger pixels means better We've low light. We've also incorporated a high resolution, eight megapixel front facing camera with HDR plus, so you can get the world's best selfies on this phone. <laughs> the 6P <laughs> comes with Nexus selfies. imprint, 
a seamless way of authenticating with your fingerprint. fingerprint we put an incredibly inference. fast and accurate fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone you think about to complement the way That's you naturally hold it. a good place it. for it. It feels like might be, might be right. Will effortlessly wake up the device. Yeah, that was what I felt. Uh, they, they were originally going to put a fingerprint course, sensor on the Nexus, Nexus 6 where that giant button is uh, on the Moto X. Yeah. Uh, and it, it really does. It I mean, that's where your finger rests. The yeah. runs the latest Android 6.0 software, codenamed Marshmallow. And like all Nexus devices, it receives the latest software and security updates directly Russell, have you been using 6.0 in any way? Or? Okay. I have. I've been running the developer preview on a, a Nexus 6 and a Nexus 9. And uh, you like it? I'm definitely a fan of it so far. They, they did some really nice things for tablet optimizations, and for the phone, it, it, it definitely is a, a, an improvement. Here's the 5X, as predicted. Now, the Nexus 5X offers top-of-the-line performance in a compact, affordable package. Ah, affordable. There's the word that we were looking for. It has a 5.2-inch display but it maintains the trademark screen to weight ratio coming in at only 136 grams, reader also. which is amazing for a screen of this size. We've also increased the battery size by almost 20% 20, 20 to 2,700 milliamp hours. That's a lot. So is is Marshmallow longer. better for battery in Russell? The Absolutely. There's two really critical things that they do for, for battery improvement in 6.0. The uh, dose helps with uh, uh, standby things when, when you're not actually using the hardware. And then App Standby uh, takes a look at each of the individual apps that are requesting things and, and can actually reach in and deny requests of certain things depending on your environment. Yeah. And of course, USB Type C. And they say for fast Type C charging. charging. That worries me a little the bit. The phone it, itself like it is available not do in the carbon other white, excuse me, carbon black, quartz <laughs> white, and ice blue. So to learn a little Gotta bit more about both blue. phones, let me walk you through a couple of key hardware features in more detail. So let's talk about Show camera. something good. <laughs> Modern flagship phones do pretty well for outdoor shots. Count the elements. Where they tend to struggle is with indoor photography in less than ideal lighting conditions. And that's ironic. More elements people generally spend over means 20 better hours a day light. indoors. But wider the new aperture. Nexus camera is great outdoors, but it's also optimized for indoor photography in three key ways. First, as I mentioned earlier, oh, the 12.3 megapixel oh, no, imaging something. sensor has very large 1.55 micron pixels, providing 92% more light collection efficiency than the original Nexus 6. Now, Pixel size is not a dimension you usually hear people talk about, but it's really important to the quality of the picture. Yeah, it's a big difference. The larger the pixel size at a given density, the more photons of light the sensor can collect in tricky lighting conditions. I think that's why and larger sensor sensors more light, generally give you better allows results. allows you to run shorter exposure times, so you have less motion blur. So that, Again, combined in comparison with the fact to the you get six. less handshake yes. artifacts when you have larger pixels, means we obviate the need for OIS. In fact, interesting. This so they're saying they don't need OIS because of their mic sound. Disappointing. Camcorders and digital cameras, and is unprecedented in a mobile phone. I'm not sure I buy that. Second, we've chosen a fast closed-loop autofocus technology optimized for low-light conditions. The Nexus 6P has a laser detect autofocus system, which uses a time-of-flight IR laser to enable instant autofocus of close-by objects. I've become and kind of a, a devout believer in OIS. I'm it really makes a difference in low and light. And added a new mode that automatically kicks in during low light. So let's compare the Nexus 6P against we'll the original see. Nexus 6 and the oh, iPhone 6S. This. iPhone 6S With Plus photos right taken up there. about 23 minutes past sunset, the cameras are roughly comparable. Uh, now, I like the iPhone let's better. Let's take a look at <laughs> the photos. Be nice sunset, there. And things get darker. And you can clearly yeah, see a difference. I mean, in that iPhone photo is way the Nexus brighter. The yeah. outperforms all of the other phones we've tested in terms of brightness, detail, less noise or graininess. It's interesting, though, because you lighting. usually are taking pictures inside. Uh, and here's a couple and, uh, of photos that Googlers have been able to take while out casually testing the phone. <laughs> Some of these were just literally taken around the Google campus. That's beautiful. It's an amazing camera. Also new this year is slow motion video which is fun and great for action scenes. And kids like this one absolutely love being the subject of it. The Nexus 5X <laughs> can capture 120 frames per second, and the Nexus 6P up to 240 frames per second. That's comparable to the And iPhone. the Google Photos app That's now allows you to edit yes. the region of interest of the video to slow down. To get course, 240 on the iPhone, you have to go down to 720p. 4K video resolution at mm. normal rate. 
We've also added a new feature to the Nexus 6P, which we call Smart Burst. You simply hold down the shutter button to trigger, That's an which captures feature. bursts of images at a staggering 30 frames per second. Yeah, it's really annoying Smart if you Burst hold it and forget fun, it. <laughs> the moment, like this one, and you can automatically select the best image from the burst. Yeah. Finally, being able to quickly capture a fleeting moment is important for mobile phone cameras. So we've Works really well with the, for you to just assistant the power button auto to instantly launch the camera. Okay, so next, app? I'd like to talk to you about the new Android sensor hub. This is a dedicated low power processor that the, uh, auto awesome directly Google Photos. to Google ah, Phone okay. sensors and runs Google's unique That's right, sensor algorithms. Now, modern smartphones are evolving to become more aware of their environment, to move beyond questions like, where am I, to more nuanced things like, how familiar am I with this area, and what am I currently doing? Answering these questions requires processing large amounts of sensor data over time in a power-efficient way. By offloading sensor processing from the main CPU to the Android Sensor Hub, we're able to run at a fraction of the power budget. The Nexus 5X and 6P uses the Sensor Hub in a couple of innovative ways. So for example, the Sensor Hub performs advanced activity recognition. So it's smart enough to track your run or your biking as soon as you start, even with the screen off with minimal power overhead. Sounds like The Sensor uh, Hub can also detect when the phone is picked up that specialized and automatically processor, the Motorola the ambient display. debuted in the Moto X and is now and in the, the ambient iPhone. display shows you the time yes. and any Motion pending notifications on your lock screen in a low power white on black display mode. From there, you can seamlessly touch the screen to go into a full power mode oh, that's and interact closer. with notifications. So that's the Android Sensor Hub. I'd like to talk about another feature, another great hardware feature on these phones, and that's fingerprint. The Nexus 5X and 6P comes with Nexus Imprint, which makes unlocking the phones more convenient and secure and lets you accelerate payments and sign-in <laughs> operations. Now, fingerprint sensors have been Apple, available course, on several devices really blew in the Android this capability out of the water and made it almost but a must-have now. And when Synaptics released an equivalently Android good sensor, for the first time, uh, it made it possible for Android devices to have it. I don't know whose technology ecosystem. Google's using or if they're using their own. The Nexus imprint sensor provides amazing performance. Registering a finger takes literally just a couple of seconds. A couple of seconds One is a lot slower than the iPhone can recognize success. a single finger almost in instant. less than 600 milliseconds. It's convenient and secure, and the sensor performs with an incredibly low false reject rate, so it almost never fails. What's really cool is that Nexus imprint gets better over time. With almost each use, never it fails. more about oh, yeah. your unique fingerprint. <laughs> so to unlock my device with Nexus imprint, all I have I'd to laugh, do is laugh, but like every fingerprint sensor, sensor has a failure rate. And it simultaneously rate, so. wakes up the app. I have to say the iPhone's pretty the darn good. It's, it's super definitely fast. fast. Definitely way better in the S release. Fingerprint unlocking yeah, it's is amazing. super convenient when combined with Android Pay. So when you're in a store, simply touch the back of your phone to unlock, tap the payment terminal to complete your purchase. It's that easy. On the phone itself, you can use your fingerprint to simply and quickly authorize Play Store purchases. And we've been working with partners to integrate fingerprint support across a wide range of banking and commerce apps. OK, so let's switch gears for a moment and talk about some of the features of Marshmallow that really shine on the Nexus 5X and 6P. With Android 6.0 Marshmallow, we've gone back to the basics to focus on improving the core user experience. At Google I.O. in May, we talked about some of the areas we polished, like text selection improvements, a new copy and paste floating bar, volume controls, and more. Now that we're done, I wanted to show you a few more examples of polish and craftsmanship that can be found throughout Marshmallow. So let's start with the lock screen. Now, we already have quick access to camera from the lock screen. In Marshmallow, we've extended quick access to Google Voice Search and Actions. So you just swipe from the left corner, and you get this beautiful material reveal animation, and then you can simply say what you want. Hmm. For example, call Pacino Restaurant. That's new. You'll also notice the little charging indication on the lock screen, indicating that the phone is in fast charging mode, thanks to USB Type-C. And it's also estimating how much time the phone will take to charge. You replace the phone icon the phone, with the search icon. One of the first things mm. you'll notice is that we've reworked the window, uh, window animations. So they follow the material design principle where elements appear from their point of touch or interaction. When you touch a launcher icon, it expands outwards. 
and then it dismisses vertically downwards when you're done with it. So it feels intuitive and natural. We've also taken great care to simplify how heads-up notifications work. If you receive a heads-up notification, say an incoming text message, the notification now peeks down with a little bouncing animation to get your attention without disrupting your current task. You can easily push the notification back up to its hiding place. A little place, more Irish leaking into his swipe accent. Down to reveal the <laughs> He's rest getting excited. The notification shade. <laughs> now the physics of notifications are truly consistent everywhere. This is Dave Burke, who's Another the VP area of engineering now. Find is the home screen. I would guess the next system. You can quickly scroll to find an app with the new A to Z indexing scheme, or indeed just in instantly type the first letter or two to find the app. That's nice. We've also added on device yeah, I'm a big and that's very iOS y, isn't it? Yeah. To learn your pattern of app launches over time and provide dynamic shortcuts at the top of the launcher for quick access. The phone learns your patterns, so it'll be able to show you apps you tend to launch at a certain time of day, say in the morning versus the evening, or in fact, apps you tend to launch in a specific sequence. And of course, with Marshmallow, we radically up to, uh, changed the run, user permission uh, model engineering by Android greatly when Andy simplifying Rubin, the number uh, of permissions apps can ask for and only asking for permission the first time you try to use a feature instead of asking during installation time. So for example, let's say I launch Twitter kind of and I want to tweet with an attached Hugo location. Bar as replacement when I press the location button, guy. the system presents a runtime permission for location like so. Now, We've heard loud and clear from Android users that they feel some phones come installed with too much bloatware. With the new Nexus devices, we've reduced the number of preloaded apps on the phone to make the out-of-box experience cleaner and simpler. We've also developed a new system that moves a over a quarter of our apps to a post-setup installation phase, which means they can be uninstalled just like any other apps. OK. So at Google I.O. in May, we demoed a new feature we've been working on called Now on Tap. This feature is launching with the Nexus 5X and 6P, making our new phones not just faster, but also smarter. Now on Tap brings the power of Google search to whatever you're doing on the phone. You simply tap and hold the home button to get quick information and actions without leaving the app you're currently in. So Google draws on all of the resources of your phone to bring you the right information and apps for what you need in the moment. So let's take a look at this in action. Maya is here on stage to help me with a couple of demos. Maya, by the way, is the product manager behind the awesome Nexus imprint feature I showed earlier. OK, so let's say Maya is using WhatsApp, and she receives a message like so from a friend. Have you been using this, uh, uh, Russell? You like Now on Tap? Now on Tap has not here, actually been available for the developer oh, preview. Okay. So it's not something I've used yet, but it's something I've been really excited about. Me too. And quick access. Here? You can quickly see the restaurant's rating and how far away it is. Now on tap is providing assistance on directions. There's a phone icon to directly call a restaurant and even a Yelp icon to get reviews. Now on tap is also providing a convenient option to directly create a calendar reminder event. Removing bloatware apps and you can is something see if Maya then taps on the open Tim table Cook has icon, promised on Apple but has not delivered on. It's nice that Google's doing that. It's super convenient. Now on Tap is a really innovative enhancement to Google Now's assistant capabilities. And like many of Google's services, it's based on a learning system, which gets better with usage over time. And I just realized how menacing this shirt is. I know. Now, <laughs> oh my god, is a giant, what, tiger? He really yeah, wants to make sure that you don't look away. It's about to eat you, which is what my three-year-old would say. It's a little scary, actually. To perform Thanks, actions Gina. such as sending a text message or setting a message. Is this woman going to speak? Does she have any lines? No, this is a she's, she's done. This is They'd have to pay her union scale. I mean, what? <laughs> that is a little. Hey, we had a woman on stage, though. Remember, that's, I, oh, that's oh, the metric. She's doing the demo. She's doing the demo. She's pressing the button. can't talk and press buttons. That supports the new voice interaction capabilities in Marshmallow. She's able to trigger the app and then interact with the app all by her voice. So let's take a look. OK, Google. There we go. Listen to NPR. I think Here's it's nice the that news. she's not a native English speaker because Would it like shows that it the works reporter catch yeah. up on the with accents. News. Latest news. OK, oh, catching this is you very up cool. on the latest news. That's neat. So it knows NPR 1, obviously, and NPR is customized it. 
to use the so voice. That's great. Here was the NPR app was able to ask a clarifying question to Maya. I think this is part of the app linking thing that we saw uh, at the I.O. So this is cool to see yeah. in action. Both the Nexus 5X and 6P support always on OK Google detection. This that works even when the screen is off. Burke's, uh, thanks to a hardware this guy's, uh, DSP. background is his so voice, any voice app recognition. So implement the new Google voice interaction capabilities from a to small Irish voice recognition firm. Use. So. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on and talk it's about batteries. It's not surprising batteries. that they would really Our engineers voice. have been working hard on optimizing battery life. Just on yesterday, for we did the story about how they're With updating their we've made our biggest voice search to capabilities to we've on made Google. Android smarter about how it manages power with the new Doze mode. We're using significant Even the new Siri does not come up to a Google Now capabilities. For a of time. In that case, will exponentially back off background activity. This is what they need to, to do. These are, mm -hmm. these are these wake lots just kill you. Messages. But they said they'd do this before they'd group the system them. to prioritize the apps you use more frequently over That had a lot more to do with things like garbage collection and stuff like that. This is this is uh, Google reaching you know, in and forcing an app to behave some way. Something uh, Apple's done for a while. It's one of the reasons I think iPhones get so much better life with much smaller batteries. screen is off the average battery life lasts 30% longer in Marshmallow on the first generation That's Nexus fantastic. 5 Boy. and Nexus 6 devices. These new phones have these fairly hefty batteries, especially the battery uh, 6 life by Purely via software changes. And of course, the new Nexus 5X and 6P benefit from these power improvements in Marshmallow. OK, so finally, I'm happy to announce that Android 6.0 Marshmallow will begin rolling out to existing Nexus devices starting next week, yes. including the Nexus 5, 6, nice. 7, 9, and Nexus Player. Very nice. Now, here's nice. Sabrina to tell you more about where you can buy the new Nexus 5X and 6P. Thank you. Store.google.com. <laughs> Refresh. <laughs> That's Dave Burke, VP of Thank Engineering. You. The team is stage. really But hey, they got another woman on stage. Yes. There phones. we go. So I want to take a moment to tell you where you can actually buy them. And that's at the Google Store. Back in March, we launched the Google Store as the new home for the latest devices that work with Google, including Nexus phones and tablets, Chromecast, Chromebooks, I actually Android like the new store. I think they're doing a good products, job. Not to mention yeah, the accessories that go with them. <laughs> Now the Google Store is available in over two dozen countries and 50 different has languages. Has not been changed, however. And we continue to work to make it easier for you uh, to find today, and I mean. buy the hardware you're looking for. We're guessing the hardware you're looking for today might include our new phones. So let's talk details. All right. Starting today, let's do it. the Nexus 5X and the Nexus 6P will be available for pre-order pre on the Google Store in the US, UK, Ireland, and Japan with more countries coming in the next few weeks. Not Canada. Outside the US, in addition to the Google Store, we're also partnering with leading retailers and carriers to sell both devices. That's interesting, in partnering with pricing, carriers outside the US. The Nexus 5X starts at $379. Very nice, that's a good price. Wow. That's and what you want. And the Nexus 6P starts at $499. Wow. Uh, okay. That's the 128 gig version. Later yeah. In October. Uh, 649 is this is that's still two three hundred dollars less than an iPhone. Both will work that's across a, major networks that's a very good, in the US that's an aggressive as well price. as internationally. And both come with a great new set of and a, offers a bit of a surprise. The six is expensive. That I want to tell you more about now. First, Plus freebies. all Nexus phones will come with a 90-day free subscription to Google Play Music. Oh, nice. So you'll have access to over 35 <laughs> they're really, million they're really songs taking aim anytime at Apple you here. want. Yeah. Second, all Nexus pre-orders in the U.S. also include a $50 play credit. Nice. So you can stock up on your favorite apps, games, and movies. That's for getting people moving, o moving over, right? And third, invested. Yeah, absolutely. you'll now have yep. the option to safeguard your phone with a new program we're launching called Nexus Protect. Nexus phones already include a one-year manufacturer's warranty in the U.S. It's an but with warranty. Nexus Protect, we're providing an additional year, so you have two years of coverage for mechanical breakdown. You'll also have two years of protection from accidental damage, nice. which covers mm. those drops, spills, and cracks we all worry about. That's a really good thing. Of course, one of the worst the things is the about a broken phone is, well, not having a phone. So, if something does happen, you can file a claim 24-7 and get a new device as early as the next business day. 
Wow. Nexus Protect That's costs $69 for the 5X and $89 for the 6P. It's really launching impressive. in the U.S. today with more countries coming soon. Uh, also, a, a Finally, fairly uh, significant for all you discount from Apple's costs there, for their Apple Care Plus. We're pleased to announce that the Nexus Project 5X five. and 6P are available on the Fi Network. Yes. We launched Project Fi. Fi has saved me a lot of money, I have to say. It's a fast, easy wireless it's a pretty good deal. wireless experience and to drive innovation with leading partners like Sprint and T Mobile. With today's announcement, Fi users will have a larger set of phones to choose from and still enjoy all the services that they love with Fi, including a high quality connection that intelligently selects between multiple cell carriers and Wi Fi, and a simple data plan that provides money back for unused data. This is Google's MVN. It's still early days Sprint for Project Fi, but we're excited to add these two Nexus phones to the program. Visit the Project Fi site to learn more and to request an invite. And that's the Nexus update. Two new great phones and a special set of offers and services. Very aggressive pricing. In addition to phones, right. the, next, the Google Store also includes a wide selection of Android Wear watches. From round to square, from traditional to sporty, one of the best Are you, are you on the store, Gina, refreshing? Is that I don't yes, see I it am. yet. <laughs> nothing there, nothing there, not yet. Just a few weeks ago, she we said pre order today. She didn't say delivery when delivery. Huawei, would be. Motorola, and Asus right. that you can see here. Each watch has an always on display. So, unlike I, some I, other I, smart I, watches, my Moto 360's been delayed another you two can tell weeks, the time but I, that Huawei all the is very time. tempting. And they all have it's batteries nice that will last you yeah. all day. All new watches work with both Android phones as well as iPhones. Not well so on even iPhones, if you decide to buy your uh, phone from someone else, get you can still have your choice of watches. You can find them all today on the Google Store. That's our family of watches and a new family of Nexus phones. Fresh. Of course, one of our hopes for all this technology Fresh. is that it can help connect real <laughs> families too. <laughs> to tell you more about how you we're thinking about You snooze, you lose on these. They don't give you a lot of time. The entertainment space, it's true. Here's Eunice from the Google Play team. Oh, we're going to hear about family setups. This is something Google has always been really terrible at. <laughs> yeah, Thanks, this is Sabrina. real families as opposed families to fake families. That's been a big priority right. for Google Play this year. We've rolled out some things that make it an even better place for families to play together. Things like more prominently displayed content ratings for apps and games. Improved tools that help it make it easier for parents to decide what's right for their families and an all new way to find family friendly content across movies and TV, apps and books. And today, I'm excited to share how we're making our music experience better for families too. I was part of the Google Play music team when we first launched in 2011. And we've added some great features based on feedback from our users. And I want to share uh, some of the work we've been doing on one of our most requested features, one that I've personally wanted for a while too. Let me tell you a bit more about my family to explain why. When I was in college in New York, I fell in love with East Coast hip hop. Wu-Tang Clan, yeah, Biggie, it's like my and kids. And now <laughs> and Apple I thinks I love hip hop. On Google Play, whether I'm just kicking back with Biggie Radio or building out playlists with all of my old favorites. But my husband, well, he's a few years older than I am, so his tastes are a bit different. He was emo before there was even a name for that. And wow. he still occasionally cats. returns to 80s favorites cat, like cat. the Smiths. Exciting. I see what his cat, cat slide. So we're both big <laughs> music fans, which is why we have two Google ben Play music going, accounts. I knew it. We often listen at the same time on each of our devices, whether I'm at the office or he's out for a run. And we like music that's tailored to the stuff that we like. For families like ours and for many more, I'm excited to announce the Google Play Music family plan. So Apple does Starting this. later this year, families will be able to subscribe to Google Play Music together for just $14.99 oh, per boy, month right at for Apple. six people. Right at Apple. With this offer, families can unlock they the They really needed to do this. Because it's tied to your Google account, there was just no just way to share your price. music. Yeah. It's so very what frustrating. Like for us? Well, like a lot of families, we've got a bunch of devices at this point. This is a good deal. All of us In fact, have I'll phones. subscribe immediately. We've got a tablet, uh, laptops for work and for school, a TV with a Chromecast, and so we'll on. We'll have to see how they implement with the family plan, Apple doesn't do a great job We can listen across all of them and we won't interrupt each other's experience. 
And we'll keep getting music that's personalized to each of us. So while I'm getting ready to work out with entering Beast Mode Radio, my husband can help him discover <laughs> more music that lets him wall I am really pity. enjoying this song. And now, with the family plan, we can afford what to give our daughter Heart Attack by Demi? to her own account. So she <laughs> Lovato? Is that his, her husband's music? Clarkson to her she said so he can wallow in self-pity. <laughs> awesome We're putting the finishing touches on the product, so look for the family plan later this year. Later this year. Now, music is just one of the many areas where we're doing more for families. And I apologize for I'd bringing like up Apple so often, Emil, but honestly, that's who you have to aim at if you're in the phone business and now music us. business. Those are the people you need absolutely. to beat or at least compete with. Yeah, it's Apple's sweet spot, absolutely. Yeah. And this is, that's the, where Google's the underdog. In yep. bringing families together. There's nothing quite like that feeling of reminiscing over an old family album. I'm loving the variety the joy of, of number creating of and sharing new memories. Mm -hmm. I think that's Four great. months ago, we launched Google Photos. I don't just mean the diversity. The I just think the number is great. We've seen tremendous adoption. Uh, a lot of voices. In fact, in yeah. the short time since launch, it feels like a team People effort. have already uploaded over 50 billion photos and videos. Apple's still the Tim Cook company. You know, Google Photos was effort. built from the ground up, centered on three big ideas: a home for all your photos and videos, organized and brought to life so that you can share and save it's what interesting matters. interesting how feature sets are converging. Today, I'm excited Google to announce Apple. three new features we've been working on to make it easy for you to share, relive, and hold on to the moments that matter with the people that matter. First, I'd like to talk about a feature that's near and dear to my heart. My okay, wife, Jess, and I have a young family, which ah. means we both take a lot of photos and videos. It's like a gold one. We each have a mm -hmm. library of memories, often of the same event, and they're on two different devices Ooh, with no this easy is gonna way be good. to pull them together. <laughs> My wife might do the same that, thing. Our parents keep asking us for photos of the kids. And even though we have the best intentions, we often don't get around to sharing because it's just too hard. Mind you, this is the exact same problem whether you're a family or a group of friends that went to a party together. How do you easily pull photos and videos into a single shared album that everyone can hold on to. How, how, how? Tell us how. how do people get Tell notified <laughs> when new photos and videos have been added? <laughs> this is great. Of course, Apple's done this very do do well for years. In a way it was photo streams? No setup uh, and yeah, and, and you know, device, they changed no in the middle have, to, from one technology Android, to the other, which is a little disruptive. Mac, Windows, uh, Chrome but OS, they've always been good at sharing albums well, let me show with you. family members. Here we have my phone. I have a bunch of photos and videos from a recent family trip where we went apple picking. I've created an album, <laughs> and let's say I want to share these uh, with my I wife. I think we have a show title. <laughs> with Google Photos, this is really easy. I just tap the share button. I'll pick any app. Wow. Wow. Pick Hangout, wow. And I'm going to go ahead, and I'll send her the link. Freudian much? Now, this part isn't new. This no-strings-attached sharing has always been part of Google I use photos. this constantly, by the way. Now, on this side, we have Jess's iPhone. She's going to get my message, tap the link, and here's what she sees. This has been out for a while, right? Jess can yeah. now tap this the is, this plus exists. button in the upper oh. right-hand corner right. okay. and easily add her photos That's what's new. to the same album. She can put her pictures These in there. These are the ones she took that gotcha. day on her device. Isn't it? Notice, I'm actually in I don't know how this behaves on iOS. I think that might be a new iOS-specific thing. You can see thing. me there in the blue it, shirt. It, it did do that on iOS, too. If we go back to okay. my phone, I think. you'll see that Wait. I've been notified that Jess has this added looks more transparent photos to the album. because you don't have to be and set it up this way as a shared album. I'm you just right send an album, album and then it's automatically and shared and, exactly and you can add to it. She added by the name attribution like that. that's on the oh, bottom see, of every photo. Jess and oh, I nice. have a Imagine this for a wedding. That has all the photos from the day and we will both be notified anytime either of us adds photos and videos. This is a core part of the Google Photos mission. We want to make it easy for you to hold on to the memories that matter, even when you weren't the one holding on to the camera. Now, I know my mom would love to see these photos of her grandkids, too. So let me go ahead and send her the link. This time, I'll pop in an inbox. Incidentally, no Google I'll pick Plus a draft involved I already have ready, in this. Paste the link. Yeah. This is, this is and we'll completely independent of any site, it sounds If like. we go onto this side now, you're looking at my mom's tablet. Aww. She's going to go ahead mom's and open up my email. I love these Apple picking pictures. Tap on the link. And this, again, will bring up Jeez. all the photos and videos that Jess and I have <laughs> shared in this album. Say Apple picking Now, my mom wasn't with times. us at the app. <laughs> <laughs> we lost the audio. No. Oh. I think the stream is frozen. You're watching our live, semi-live coverage of Google's Nexus event. 
Russell Holly is with us from Android Central. Gina Trapani from MakerBase. Great to have you uh, both. So far, pretty impressive. Um, and and I don't think Bob. Apple picking. Here the we go. Mom has joined the album. Mom joined the album. In theory. Is mom actually doing this All in right. real time? Mom. Well, normally I would get a notification. <laughs> get going, that mom. Me that she's seen it. And that okay, that's the first demo I, fail we've seen, and it's been a pretty smooth event so viewed far. The photos, and she's telling me she wants me to send her more. So it just so happens that a few days after, we had a little family bake-off, and I'm just going to go ahead and add these new photos and videos to the same album. And let's see what happens. Nothing, because now, mom is still back on asleep. my mom's tablet... He's, we should the see guy on the right is working as fast as he can. It looks like with the <laughs> he's smiling. Having a he's going, with the Mom, come on. She'll get a notification. <laughs> there it is. And she's going to go ahead and open up that shared album. And now she can see all the photos. Oh, it notifies you. That's good. Including Fantastic. the ones I just added. New pictures, Mom. That's nice. an early preview of Google Photos shared albums. Very nice. A new easy Coming way later this year. to pull this is not a marshmallow feature. And get updates with no setup on any device. All right, they, they get a pass off for the demo fail then. Later yeah, this year. it worked. Next, let's talk about the challenge of finding and sharing that one photo. With Google Photos, we didn't want to just build any Photos app, but rather lean on Google's strengths in organizing information. By harnessing the power of machine learning, Do you think this learning, will be a new kind of collection, Gina, or is it going to be a whole new your feature photos in Google Photos? photos. Around what matters to you. For example, <sighs> you can quickly find all the this, photos of a single person kind of like collections. in your library. Yeah, well, kind of. Though. He's talking about singing, sharing a single photo. Of your mom, and you just want to find that one photo of her from this that is, trip to Hawaii. And this is a problem, right? Like, or in my case, I often want to see photos that have both my daughters in them. So how do I search for photos of Ava and Lily together? This is where. To and Google this is where Google searches, shines, right? Shines. This is We're absolutely. Yeah. The ability for Apple has label similar features. In fact, in Siri now. Has you can some now give them the any name capabilities you like. of doing James this. James Ward, Maggie, Mom. Uh, you know, Google's a yours. search company. If they can't do this better than now. anybody, then. What about that crazy cousin I have who insists that I always call him Dutch Thunder? <laughs> you can do that too. <laughs> these labels are 100% private. <laughs> this presentation's had a good sense of humor. Good. Like these it. labels, it's you good. can now perform powerful compound searches like this one. Here, I search for Maggie hiking. So rather than seeing all the photos of Maggie or all the photos this I have of so hiking, amazing, now technology. I get a much smaller I need to do this more. I just forgot that, that you right. could do this. Dad at the it's kind of hidden game. because you have to click the May, magnifying glass and then Jerry you see it all. Dutch yeah. Thunder at the beach in Cancun. It's now that much easier to find well, and share with your new big phone, you might be doing that, that you're looking for. I know. This feature will be available on Android this week. Refreshing. It's coming very soon to web and iOS. Somebody said it in the chat room, Finally, and I think they're right. They're let's gonna, talk about those times when the you want to share the photos and videos with the people closest to you. Announced. And by closest to you, Makes I mean sense. literally closest to you. As in, they're in the same room. Say you're uh, at party home, mode. hanging oh, out with boy. the family, talking about that epic day you had at the skate park. You quickly pull up the photos and videos, but then what? Your phone gets passed around, and yeah, or everyone huddles around your small screen, but no one can actually see or hear. No. Meanwhile, your TV is sitting 10 feet away. Ooh, turned off. Throw it to the TV. As if it's mocking you. Well, no more. <laughs> your TV We're is bringing mocking. My TV mocks me on a regular. <laughs> mock Let's you. take a look. You little human. Here again, we have my phone, and on this side, we have a TV connected to Cast. It's Chromecast. The Photos app okay. has detected that a Cast, cast. device is nearby. Notice so the. We'll just tap the button. Select the device. Is that new or is that what they always call it? When I tap no, the yeah, it immediately shows up. They call it casting, but he said it's, I can swipe it's connected my with and videos, cast. And they'll cast. automatically yeah, like device is generally screen. Chromecast. I can even cast like, an animated They started GIF. switching with Android TV to calling it Let's Google Cast. Let's say I want to find a different photo right. to cast. So okay. that language isn't phone, entirely new. I can leave right. the full screen view, scrub through my library. So this is why you're going to leave your TV on all the time from now on. I can look at my albums. No, HDMI CEC will search. turn it off. Actually, CEC does that. I, one of the reasons I end up using Chromecast more than anything else is that I don't have to turn on the TV. For everyone to look at. I just cast, Even and the Chromecast says, all right, I'll turn library. everything on. I'm like mirroring. <laughs> it's this nice. Me it's a nice feature. Which photos and videos I can no, just not sitting there mocking you. So you don't have to worry you. about no. sharing your screen <laughs> while you're searching me. your library for that It also turns it on in the middle of the night sometimes, What if your photos and videos haven't yet been backed up? No problem. If we go to the top of my library, you'll see a few photos I took this morning. 
And if you notice the cloud with the slash through them, this is designating that these photos haven't yet right. been backed up to my Google Photos account. They're purely local to the device, but I can still cast them. Mm. Okay. Chromecast in Photos is rolling out this week yes. on Android and very soon to iOS. Photos are just one of the ways that we're making it even easier to bring people together around the biggest screen in the house. To talk a little bit more about how we're continuing to evolve the living room experience, I'd like to invite uh -huh, Mario from the Chromecast team. Chromecast, yeah, Chromecast. Uh, okay. I'm still not totally sure what's different about how Photos works with Cast, Chromecast now, but you, okay. Let's continue like with some TV minor and new home features. We introduced Chromecast in July of 2013 based on the simple premise that the smartphone, powerful and familiar, is increasingly at the center of how we manage our lives, including accessing TV shows, movies, music, games, and more. Chromecast allows you to bring apps to the TV simply by extending the mobile apps you already have on your phone to the big screen. Your mobile apps are, have the latest features. You're already logged in. They, they know your preferences. Uh, connect them to Chromecast, and your phone becomes your best remote. And our vision doesn't stop at TVs. 50% of audio listening takes place in the home. Our technology allows us to go beyond the TV screen to your other home entertainment devices, including speakers. And what about content? Since the launch of the original Chromecast, thousands of Android, iOS, and web apps have been published with support for Cast. The pace of apps launching on Chromecast is accelerating. Pick from over 200,000 TV shows and movies from premium providers like HBO and Comedy Central. I'm oh, excited Showtime to and Slinger new icons. That starting today, Showtime is bringing all yep. of its content. Good <laughs> catch, to Russell Holly. And Cast support will also be available from Sling TV in the next few weeks. <laughs> You're good. And many other videos. I have to be honest, Showtime's frustrating. I've always in I've sports, wanted to be able to do We that. offer many of the top leagues and networks. I enjoy MLB at Bat, CBS Sports, Amazon and lots and lots of others. Streaming. And I'm really excited it's about Cast video. support coming this fall to apps from the NBA, NHL, wow. BN Sports, and many more partners. In music, we can stream more than 35 million songs, radio stations, and podcasts. In family apps, there's a ton of great entertainment for the kids. And games on the big screen it's for everybody It's taken a couple of years, the but they've, they've really enriched this ecosystem. One exciting aspect of the cast model I thought it would grow is faster how apps sooner. are using the smartphone to enhance what's streaming on the TV. For example, with the recently added, uh, with the recently launched NFL Sunday Ticket by DirecTV, while a game is streaming on the TV through Chromecast, you can easily browse rich nice. information on the device in your hand without disruptive overlays on the TV. Nice. You can also very easily Second look for screen. another game to flip to yeah. or discover that there is a fantasy zone that you can go to. A great experience across Both screens. Both the Xfinity and With the Xbox model, apps slide in on onto the screen and they reduce and the screen size. It doesn't to the seem TV. desirable. By taking advantage of the superior computing power of the smartphone, we free ourselves to optimize the hardware design of Chromecast for streaming and connectivity. We can deliver great capabilities at a very inexpensive price. Couple that with practically unlimited entertainment, and you have happy users and sales momentum. Today, we're excited to announce that we have passed 20 million total Chromecast sales globally. Wow. That's in a fraction of the time of any product in this the This is category. a laggard market, and so 20 million is very hardware, good, uh, even compared to Roku and Apple tight TV. Coupling certainly with Apple software TV, I to deliver it's, it's fast right up there. and polished experiences. Apple TV, I think, it was 14 Today, million a year we're ago. we're also very happy to announce two beautiful, brand new Chromecast products. First, the new Chromecast. We've redesigned go, Chromecast Russell. to bring Yay. a modern new look. You'll notice the industrial design that sets the new Chromecast apart. It does look it's like going to be behind my TV. Factors. I don't care what yeah, it is. Yeah, I know. It's a, HDMI cable I know. What? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a little dongle. For you to take it with you on the go. Oh, okay. Take it in with addition you on to the black, go. we're offering Chromecast in two fun colors, 
lemonade, and coral. I have one of the new Chromecasts right Wait, here. Wait, this is the thing that's behind your TV? Yeah, okay. but you might take it with you. Okay. It did look like there's an audio port at the bottom. Here yeah. it is. It looks like a keychain. Oh, it's tiny. The small size it is tiny. Of, the Chrome, of the new Chromecast allows for it to hide behind the TV so that it doesn't so, uh, so clutter your living room. Is. The integrated HDMI cable makes it really easy for you to plug it into virtually any TV, uh, especially if you have crowded ports. Just as important, tell me it doesn't require a separate Chrome, power source, and I'll be way happier with you. It, it will, because yeah. most people don't have the powered HDMI. We now support HDMI. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> and five gigahertz as well, a dual There's only certain HDMI ports gigahertz, that support well power. So. Wait a second, that thing is going to hang off my TV like that? Yeah. Home networking technologies. AC. We designed an entirely new adaptive antenna system, which includes uh. three very efficient antennas and an algorithm that ensures that the Wi-Fi chip is always using the best antenna and radio frequency. That's important. For the I, I don't have too much trouble with my Chromecast home. picking up Wi-Fi, but Take a look at the I imagine that's not that uncommon. The original Chromecast. Yeah, I struggle with here, mine. Do you? With yeah. uh, competitive well, products be a lot of the better. same form factor. As Wi-Fi goes from strong to weak, um, uh, the, as Wi-Fi goes from strong to weak, throughput drops across all of the devices. Now let's add the data. Did for he the say new it was dual band? Is there? 2.4 and 5 Wi-Fi performance gigs? of the new Chromecast yes, it looks like it, right? significantly no. better across the entire range of conditions. <sighs> the new Chromecast can sustain uh, the flow of more data, which means higher quality video and audio, less buffering, and a superior experience. The second beautiful new Chromecast product we're announcing today is Chromecast Audio. Mm. There's a huge oh. opportunity to bring this was rumored as well that there'd be some sort of to your existing Sonos like fewer than five device that you hook up to powered speakers have speakers that can connect to the internet. Chromecast audio is a small device that plugs into an existing home speaker and streams audio through Wi-Fi from your favorite cast enabled apps. We've brought the personality of the new design uh, with the circular shape also to Chromecast audio. I love the concentric grooves around the chrome ball as a salute to the vinyl record. <laughs> the lemonade colored audio cable uh, adds right, a modern cute. look cute. to your speaker like arrangement. A little record. Inside, I think that. you have the same How long before Android Central tries to play it? For optimal Wi-Fi performance. Oh, yeah. And you do it backwards, you it says, the Apple is dead. To the 3.5 millimeter Picking Apple. input Picking of your Apple. existing speaker. We also support RCA and uh, optical inputs. Just like Chromecast, actually, it's Airport Express, to set up. Apple's little into power, airport device has done this for some time. And you're ready to cast. With the new Chromecast and Chromecast Audio, you now have a simple and consistent way to amplify but it's your a good entertainment market to, be in. to the biggest think, uh, and loudest devices market. in the home. I'm going to ask Rishi to join Adam on stage to show you how these new devices work. to see if work. they have any capability of, of synchronizing right. multiple speakers. All right, systems. Adam and I they are can excited do stereo. To show you There's all sorts of things that. So let's start no, with the new Chromecast. An expensive system like Sonos. And we showed do. you a lot of the hardware improvements we made. Now we're going to talk to you about some of the software improvements. And that starts with content discovery. So Chromecast over the last year has had many, many new apps come. I want Google now and on that thing so I can talk to When you to know uh, which app to go to, simply yeah. press the cast button and start watching. I guess you talk but to your what about phone and then it does you don't know what to watch? Or you don't know where to find it? Or so today, your TV is mocking So today, we're excited you. to announce a completely <laughs> redesigned Chromecast app for Android and iOS. Oh, new Chromecast app. Okay, new all Chromecast these great app. Options. So let's show it to you. So Adam will open up the new Chromecast app, and we'll start with what's on. With what's on, we've partnered with many top content apps yeah, to give you a single place to view all your featured content. Think of it as a central home for all your entertainment options. So in the past, the Chromecast app has been so nothing more than a way to configure a Chromecast. Trending on YouTube today. Now, right. now, now it's, it's now content. Episodes from yeah. Which probably it needed. I mean, the big complaint the is you have to launch the Play app movies. that you want, and then, then Chromecast it. Right. 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 So right. it's, this is more like a guide. This makes sense, actually. This now we is only a reasonable show you content from the apps you have installed on your phone. Because otherwise the app just everything here is useless. It just sits there after you use it. And we'll continue to add more personalization options over time. Now, we've also heard from a lot of our users that they don't know which of their mobile apps work with Chromecast. Exactly. So now we give a simple view yeah. of all your cast-enabled yeah. apps. Yeah, that's smart. So now let's go watch something. 
So I was playing with the app, and I came across a show called Black Sales. So let's go ahead and select that while we bring up the Chromecast behind me. Does it launch the Stars app? You can see app? it's executive produced by Michael Bay, so it's got to have Gotsy, a lot of explosions right? in it. So let's go ahead and watch this. Yeah, because the Stars app does the now authentication yeah, there directly into the with Stars your cable app, company. Right it has yeah. to do that, yeah. We'll even present an option oh, for you. Oh, but it links you directly to jumps into that option. That's nice. Yeah. So let's go ahead and that's click play. That's, that's as seamless you enough, Chromecast, I think. We'll be that's only going to work in Marshmallow, though. From the cloud. Yeah, because, is there some sort of handoff required? It's app linking is app linking. Oh, yeah. One of the one of the APIs for Marshmallow okay. that will allow this to happen. But now app linking is huge. Off. Looks great. So now I can go add this to my stars playlist if I want to, or I can go back to the Chromecast app and actually go find something else to watch, all without disrupting what's actually playing on the TV screen. It's a much better model. That guy's wearing an original That's a quick recap of what's on. I can't help myself. Russell, so you're sorry. like the... <laughs> With the device, watch whisper. The watch whisper. It's it. from anywhere. So we had a playback control. Pause play. Is that? It's a lug thing, isn't it? So now yeah, that one doesn't have any lugs. Right now you can. Tell can be a remote control for Chromecast. It works great when you have friends over. They can use their own phones to actually pause the playback. So should I get the Huawei? Now quickly go to get apps. Uh, or stick with the Moto 360. We have thousands of apps that have been cast enabled. You care about auto all the time. So we need a better uh, yes, app I do. discovery process. That's really what it came down to so for me was auto brightness completely. and wireless charging. They're really similar watches. The we Huawei does Qi? No, Huawei has a weird magnetic pin connector in the back oh. that doesn't work real well. Don't like I, that. I really, it's my least so favorite part of the watch. Don't like that. Find your stuff across all I don't have a Moto 360 apps. arriving. So, so for example, I, I had heard it. the X-Files is coming back to network television. So I want to catch up on the old Yay! episodes. But I didn't know where to do it. <laughs> That looks like now it's going to be so good. Now I can type in or since I'm using my phone, I can just use voice. He search. knows his audience, boy. <laughs> he does. He does. Just mention Dana Scully, and you have so my heart. We'll see X Files return to TV shows and movies. Let's go ahead and pick the TV show, and here we'll tell you all the places you can watch it on Chromecast. Very nice. Now, since I nice. have Netflix and Hulu already installed, oh. I can start oh, watching it right away. Oh, and there's a get app, but but if I don't have that, we'll help you get it. Now, That's we're going to many of the top too. content partners, including Netflix, Hulu, HBO, CBS, Fox, Comedy Central, Crackle, and more. And we'll be continuously adding more over time. Now, the other cool thing is I can go back to the search results page and also see related YouTube content, movie clips, interviews with the cast, trailers, and more. So it's a lot of fun. So that's a really quick recap of the new Chromecast app. We really think it's going to help you find great stuff to watch on Chromecast. This will be rolling out over the next few weeks on Android and iOS. Nice. OK, so now we talked about making it easy to find stuff. How about making it even faster to load? One of the challenges of streaming devices today is that when you want to watch something, you have to wait tens of seconds for the app to load and the video to buffer. We need to do better. It needs to be faster than even live TV. That is actually the, the so real Achilles heel of Chromecast. This allows content developers to start pre-catching apps often and fails. contents on Chromecast oh. the moment you open the app oh, on your phone. I don't like this idea. So let me no, show you how well this, this works. This is a bandwidth killer. So we have two Chromecasts here, one with FastPlay and one without, so you can actually do a comparison. So the moment you open the Netflix app, My experience app, has been the, the challenge really is grabbing the Chromecast the and getting it, to, getting it to say hello. So by the time you it does take a while to start uh, the, the cast movie. button, yeah, it's already it's ready there. to go. So this is something that Netflix actually rolled out to some of their smart TVs and partners, uh, but it was exclusively a Netflix feature for a while on those setups. So it preloads, but you don't haven't told it what to watch yet, so it's got to preload a significant amount of data, I would think. It has to, yeah, it has to be pretty good at guessing. The Amazon Fire TV does this, yeah. uh, and it works really well on that, but I, it also consumes quite a bit of data in the process. I'd love to turn this off. This feels like a bad net. So by the citizen. time I scroll down and hit play, the video is already Yeah, this is I mean, Come on, folks. Weird. How fast does it have to be? Get some popcorn. Get some popcorn. Now, we're <laughs> some anticipation in your life. We're a little, you know, really. we're a little spoiled. That was only a few seconds. Content prediction features early <laughs> that's that's been a big thing year. for Netflix, apparently, really is, is making it load faster. There's a so lot of research uh, uh, that shows that people will turn it off. They're impatient. Or as he said, tens of seconds. But one seconds. of the challenges is that <laughs> gamers are always looking tens for the latest seconds. and greatest tens hardware. Tens of seconds. Sorry. So what does that mean for a product like <laughs> That's Chromecast? That's kind of a It's designed to be simple. Please do more with multiplayer gaming on well, Chromecast. Fortunately, we can take advantage of the most powerful gaming device in um, many people's homes today, uh, their smartphone. Oh. Ooh. So at Google I.O., okay. we launched new developer tools called the Remote Display I APIs. think multiplayer Crossy Road is in your future, Russell. Take their existing They've done uh, and now multiplayer beach screens. buggy racing, and it's so much fun. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Oh, look at that. There you go. 
The other screen is then sent to Chromecast. So effectively, the entire experience is being driven Wii by U. your powerful phone. So let me show you yeah, a real example play on Google with Cast. Angry Birds huh. Go, a this popular is, racing game. This isn't multiplayer So Adam has already cast the game to Chromecast, and you can see the phone does an amazing job of rendering the game. Angry Birds Go is just much better on the big screen. Joey on the right is playing now, the game. Now, for this demo, Adam's using an iPhone. <laughs> Adam, sorry. We re released the remote you should be Joey, don't you think? How are you doing? So everyone can join in the fun. <laughs> oh, Android and hey, iPhone. Hey, 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 watch it. How are you doing? It just said that Adam's using an iPhone. Game developer oh, Adam's using an iPhone. Oh, well, I can see the Chromecast in it. Whether it be accelerometer, I was pleased to see Chromecast on my new iPhone. I hadn't used it in a while, and I was very happy to see it. Turns out, the phone is just the best game controller and it'll continue well, to get better as you it's upgrade. really not it's, but okay yeah that's a lot <laughs> Angry Birds Go also lie. supports yeah. a multiplayer mode and it's really simple to set up because as long as your friend has a phone so who's playing the game, game it can't be them. the chromecast it has to be you now this is one of several games we're right the it's game's like running camera, on the phone the yeah uh, yeah another interesting game that's is interesting because chromecast up to now is kind of really takes over it looks and does the and does the heavy lifting but on a game it's obviously monopoly here and now where oh. you can play four players simultaneously. Thank God, it's finally. It's a lot of fun for the family. No, it's That's not. That's what I always wanted, a board game with no board. No, it's not. It's almost never <laughs> fun. <laughs> no, it's not. Just a quick recap. It's the world's the longest game. We're also Instead announcing of throwing today, dice, we're going to throw our phones. It's going to be awesome. Including support for 500 pixel. I'm deeply images. troubled by that Chromecast and hanging off the back photos. of the TV like that. I think it's troubling to me. I want the dongle. And flicker. As a you lot can of tape it up or something. Today, so we well, they showed that there was a magnetic the feature to the back of it. What a the magnet. HDMI. You know what? <laughs> I know, the new but will be available well, that's so good today either. In 17 countries, and we're going to continue to offer it for the amazing price of $35. Wow, that's significant. wow. And for those of you who want color options, that that will also be available starting today from the Google Store. All right, refreshing. So that's a quick recap of. Actually, the, the last thing I need is a. Another so now let's talk about Chromecast Cards audio. Cards going to be fuller than I anticipated. So many of us invested <laughs> do, a lot so of money Russell, in our audio. So Russell, do you get the sense that you will need the new Chromecast no to do some way of these things? To the music we love, which uh, lives on our it's phones. It's probably going to do it much better on so some Chromecast of these. Right. Audio. A, a lot of better features, processor. We yeah. Can take yeah. A lot of those features already exist on the existing Chromecast. It's just right. not very fast. Okay. So let's say I'm at home and I want to listen to my home speaker. So let's go ahead and bring up my Nexus device. The first thing you're going to notice is that Chromecast Audio works with all the top audio apps that already work with Chromecast today, including Pandora, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and more. For now, let's open up Google Play Music, which is the app I use but for my But it doesn't listening. work with Apple Music. So you'll see I'm already logged in. Because there is no Android. Now, Chromecast Audio is automatically detected by Play Music. And so uh, I guess I press the cast button. put it in Apple Music. You see on a new device type device for speakers. You're going to see this is very familiar, right? We modeled it exactly after Chromecast. Regardless I love of it that I can cast to Spotify to my Sonos speaker, speakers, we believe not using the Sonos app, but just directly to the speaker. So let's go ahead and select the device. I would love to see more of that. Which is awesome, because the Sonos There's app nice is little audio is that you're now connected. Wait, the Spotify interface is so it. limited we don't compared have a to the Spotify app. Process. And now I can just listen to my tunes. We're streaming the highest quality audio through Wi-Fi to my old home speaker. And because I'm streaming from the cloud, we can get all, rid of all the hassles of Bluetooth. The music won't drain the battery on my phone. Streaming from the cloud. I can play on any speaker in any so room So this is more like the Chromecast playing audio. video. It's and I won't hear those annoying ringtones every time someone gives me a call. It's not the phone playing it. It's, it's not the phone playing experience. it, yeah. Yeah, so it's not just That's connecting good. your phone now, to the speaker. Now with Chromecast Audio, yeah. I can also control it from a variety of different ways with the lock screen, notification, or I can even go to my Android Wear watch and skip to the next song in nice. the playlist. Oops, I skipped okay. one over. <laughs> there we go. It's really cool. Now, of course, our home speakers are shared devices. It should be easy for anyone in the home to share their own music. So Chromecast Audio automatically works with phones, it's tablets, and laptops that are connected to your home network. Display he's got going there. And we also support <laughs> guest mode. So you can enable friends who don't have your Wi-Fi password to cast the speakers in the same no, room. I'm not. I'm not. So let's not pretend my wife walks into that. the room, and she wants to cast her Spotify playlist. Well, today, we're excited to announce Spotify is supporting Chromecast and Chromecast Audio. Yes. Very good. 
cool. This will be rolling out to all new devices yes. starting today. Similar, I'm and sure, to how it supports uh, Sonos. In the next few you just weeks. cast it to your Chromecast. So let's bring up my wife's phone, which happens to be an iPhone. Of course, with Google Cast, we're cross-platform. So regardless of whether you're an Android user, iOS user, or web user, you can cast your This music is a big differentiator in these music audio. programs. There's not a lot to differentiate. And now, just like we saw before, Spotify, Apple Music, the Rhapsody, button, Ra Rdio, the they're all... And they're so similar in their collections the and their capabilities. The so things like this make a difference, I think. They do for really me. easy. And she can do this all from the So Spotify how is this different app. from? She shouldn't have to learn a new app just because she wants to listen to music at yeah. home. It's the same app at work, in the car, and now at your house. Now the other cool thing is Spotify can support multiple users at the same time. What? So let's say I want to skip to the next song in my wife's playlist. Well, what? Well, it turns out I can use my what? own phone to do it. So let's bring back my Nexus device and open up Spotify. Spotify immediately detect what's playing on the home network. Your oh, wife is using it, dude. I was going to say, so whose Spotify I account is this? I can actually just swipe to go to the next uh, song. The, uh, uh, it's really cool. Well, it would have to be the wife's account that you're no, messing of course, with. This may start yeah, or some family. I don't understand so that. Really easy. Okay. So that's a quick recap of the new Chrome, Chromecast audio. Now, we're going to continue to bring more and more apps to Chromecast Audio. But until then, we want to make it easy for you to send any audio to your speaker. So just like Chromecast, we're going to support Optical. the abil ability to mirror audio millimeter. from your Android device An RCA. or mirror audio from any Chrome tab on Windows, Mac, and Chromebook. So now you can send audio books, podcasts, local music, even YouTube videos right to your home speaker. We're also excited to announce that Chromecast Audio will support multi-room synchronization. This means I can play the ah, same song across multiple speakers the that have a Chromecast killer. Audio in them. This will be rolling out later this year with an over-the-air update. That's, that's a big Audio deal. Chromecast Audio will also be available works. starting today in 17 countries. And we're going to price it in the U.S. for just $35. Wow. That's cheaper than bucks. a basic set of headphones. It's a great strategy. Way cheaper so now, than a Sonos setup. You yeah. need to dust off those old speakers. You gotta have powered speakers, get though. The best Wi-Fi audio experience. Um, or a stereo. So oh, I guess today. it would work with a stereo. Two amazingly powerful products for the living room, available starting today for just thirty-five dollars. Yeah, I'd probably get it. Uh, and two new Nexus devices. I'll have to see how the party showcase works. the best. All right, they're wrapping up. They're wrapping up. No tablet. Of course, we connect That's good. these screens. That's okay. With our platforms and our apps, and we saw some great new options for families, from photos. And I'm not so sure. Now, before you go, uh -huh. we want to give you a sneak peek at one more oh, device we've been working nice. on. Oh. Nice. With that, I'll introduce Andrew Bowers from the Pixel team. Yep. Oh, Pixel. the Pixel. Excellent. Well, that's what they call this tablet, apparently. is a, It's Pixel a Pixel C. tablet. So, um, as you've seen today, we're making life easier than ever to move between screens. I was a little nervous. Life, whether it's the phone in your there was pocket a new Pixel, or the TV I I just in your living room. And we've also been thinking about how to make other form factors easier to use, like tablets. Now, tablets are great for games, reading, or watching movies, but they often force you back to a laptop. Yeah, that's a Sonos killer. If they get the party mode right, that could email. be huge. And while there are plenty of keyboard accessories, they're often just that. They're accessories. They have cramped keyboards, require you to use them on a desk, or get in the way when you don't want to type. So this felt like an area that deserved taking a step back and rethinking from the ground up. And the Nexus 9 uh, now, we've tablet's taken this been kind of a flop, principles design approach before with the Chromebook Pixel. Maybe overpriced. Reimagining what an ideal laptop could be. And the Pixel line has yielded many great benefits, paving the way for new technology to enable the entire Google ecosystem. Let me give you just two examples, uh, expounding on what Sundar mentioned earlier. A few years ago, we introduced a vastly improved touchpad architecture on the original Chromebook Pixel, both hardware and software, that's since rolled out to many Chromebooks from many Oh no, it's the Pixel Pro. Whereas before you had to spend $1,000 on a laptop <laughs> to get a great touchpad, today you can buy a Chromebook for $150. Now remember, the Pixel runs Chrome OS, experience. so the question is, will the tablet Another example run is USB Chrome OS or, which or Android? Android. And data and display the rumor is it will run Android. Your devices, whether see. it's a laptop or a phone. Earlier this year, we worked with the industry to introduce this standard, launched it on this year's Chromebook Pixel, and now it's making its way onto many devices, including the Nexus phones you saw earlier. Yeah, get your seat so cables. So in the case of tablets, we ask ourselves, what would an ideal touch plus typing experience look like? Something where the screen and the keyboard complement each other uh -huh. to make the whole greater than the sum of its parts. If they announce a pencil, you know the we're in a new world. The culmination of that effort is a new addition to the Pixel family. 
Pixel C. Pixel C, that's a the new rumor. device running Android 6.0 Marshmallow. Android. Now, if you're familiar oh, with the Chromebook's oh, Pixel, oh, you're oh, oh it looks like a Surface. It has the oh, same clean lines, boy. And oh, wow. design. Oh, oh there are no boy. No exposed screws and minimal distractions. Precision engineering oh, means everything fits hinge. together with really tight tolerances, Refreshing. and it feels really <laughs> sturdy and solid in your hands. Does it snap? Now, Pixel C, where the C stands for convertible, is an yeah. entirely new Very interesting. combining an Android a tablet convertible and a uh, keyboard. Closed, they're held together with self-aligning magnets. But when you're ready to get down to work, slide the tablet off, touch it to the back of the keyboard, nice. and lift. Oh, the tablet wow. attaches that's, that's magnetically. Well designed, and the I can see the Microsoft commercial of those people clicking this. Yeah. Degrees. This is a 10.9 inch tablet. There's no kickstand or clasp mechanism to get in your way. The keyboard connects via Bluetooth, avoiding unsightly contacts on your um, no pogo on your tablet. <laughs> yeah. And it's also really sturdy. Unsightly. I can hold it by the wow. tablet. I can hold it by the keyboard. Okay. Wow. This is, down. That's a hell of a okay. magnet. Very easy to use in your lap. You can uh, use it on the bed. You can use it on the couch. Is this a good market? That's the question. I, I can't, now, the Pixel I'm just C not sure this market is, is, is thriving. We've seen a lot of Android tablets try, especially the ones that have come from Dell over the past year that are really nice, but just not quite a complete thought. Right. Looks now, like it's running Android. Area ratio I, that's used yes, by it is. Series paper, of which A4 is the standard letter format throughout much of the world. I have to say that this is validating to Microsoft. People mock the Surface, but now both Apple and Google have essentially copied it. Now, for context, the difference is these are both touch first operators. Has a 19 millimeter pitch keyboard where it pitches the distance center to center between two keys. On the Pixel C, we have an 18.8 millimeter pitch, almost the same, but within a much more portable 10 inch size. Hmm. And we're able to do this by moving hmm. five less frequently used symbol keys from the edge of the keyboard to the on screen keyboard. And this works because your hands are in very close proximity to the screen. Now, the Pixel C's keyboard has the same great feel as the Chromebook Pixel. 1.4 millimeter travel, very responsive force curve. We've tested That's the layout one thing lacking, and the I think, keyboard overall extensively and find it to be a really great touch typing keyboards. experience. They're just really not And it's not good. just for US layouts. This works for international uh, keyboards as well. Yeah, but if that actually now, feels like a Pixel keyboard, typing, that would be nice. Yeah, the Pixel keyboard's quite itself, good. And the keyboard shouldn't get in the way in that case. So this is somewhat C, like an Asus Transformer. The keyboard as, uh, attaches somebody to the back of the tablet securely so that it's out of the way but close by. Looks good, though, doesn't it? And I like unlike that Bluetooth accessories, factor, I like the, the Pixel uh, C knows when to use the physical keyboard and when to use the on-screen keyboard. It's much more natural. So I can enter in here on the screen, but then if I want to do more extensive typing, the keyboard's there That's for me. That's a very slick interface. Now, it is a Bluetooth keyboard. It has a small battery, but you'll never have to charge it either. When what? closed, what? the tablet inductively <laughs> charges the Pixel ah, C's keyboard. Oh, very they got, nice. They hired some, they they hired some designers. That That's nice. And if you don't close it for a while, don't worry. The keyboard will last for over two months of daily active usage without ever recharging. Oh, man. That's two really months. clever. So this keyboard experience is really nice, but we think you're also going to like the tablet. Inductive charging. The, the Pixel tablet. C's display lives up to its name with 308 pixels per inch. That's 4.6 million pixels if you're keeping count. Yes. Wow. That's, it's yeah. super bright at 500 nits. Very high and has amazing sRGB color gamut. That's a nice looking tablet. All of this while keeping the power low enough for great battery life on a tablet. Driving all of those pixels is an NVIDIA X1 quad core processor with oh, a desktop okay. class Max. It's an X1? GPU. How interesting. Now, if you're familiar with graphics, you'll realize that's a this lot the first of X1 uh, device? graphics horsepower in a mobile device. Yeah, and I didn't you'll think they the were going to put an X1 really on a tablet or a phone. Those were like, we put they stereo speakers made it seem like they were built for the so TV in the car. Life as well. Interesting. And with the adjustable angle screen, there's no more propping up your tablet on books or pillows to watch a movie. Uh, as you saw earlier, Marshmallow makes voice input even more powerful. And while a phone is often close by, you maybe leave this your tablet on the coffee table or on the capability. So to enable far field voice input, we've the added USB-C four microphones. Out. So now you can have voice interactions from across the room. Of course, four the tablet charges with the USB top. Type-C. And one of my favorite features for a quick check of battery life, double tap on the light bar. <laughs> now, all of the great Marshmallow features you saw earlier are here. And like our other Pixel devices, the Pixel C will get better over time with software updates every six weeks. We think the uh, Pixel C's tablet and keyboard experience really unlocks new ways to both play and be What's productive the price point? on one device. The Pixel C will be available in time for the holidays on the Google Store, starting at $499 wow. for the tablet 
and what? 149 for the keyboard. Uh, We're really uh, excited to be expanding uh, the Pixel <laughs> family to now span both Chromebooks Still, as well as Android tablets. That's, uh, that's 649. Like Nexus, that, Pixel pushes the that's, boundaries yeah, that's of what's possible it? with technology, making I mean, the entire Google ecosystem better for our users. Well, that's a good question. I mean, expect the, to hear more surface, about maybe? the Pixel C and the Surface ones. would be within the same price range, yes. so and so would the iPad Pro. Oh, yeah. The iPad Pro, iPad yeah. Pro is actually a lot more. And with that, yeah, let it me is. hand it back to Sean. Almost, yeah. But no stylus here. No stylus. And that's really what the iPad Pro is about, I think. Thanks, Andrew. Where are you? Oh, here Thank you, you all so much for joining us today, especially for everyone who joined us via live stream from all around the world. That's us. She just thanked us. What? Okay. That, bye. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, We're happy to join you. <laughs> is that officially the uh, Irish goodbye? I think she just did an Irish goodbye. I don't know. <coughs> the Dutch sandwich. The Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a new thing going around called the Irish goodbye, where you're at a party and you don't thank the host, you just disappear. See ya. See ya. Peace out. Peace out. It's the peace out. She the program just has concluded. Drop the microphone. Uh, <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> That's the Google event. I think for those uh, still there, uh, that is a. Uh, uh, there's probably a lot more going on. I'm Mike Elgin is there, and I hope we'll report back to us soon with uh, maybe some hands on with the new they're, devices. They're probably they're getting instructions on where the right. demo room is and right. where they can try these out. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so nothing uh, unexpected. Uh, Google announced several new products, including two new phones, exactly as uh, predicted by the rumor mill, the Nexus 6P. What we didn't know was the price points. And the price points are very aggressive Nexus-style price points. The 6P will start at, was it 449 uh, But, of course, uh Add more. Sixty four ninety nine, sixty four ninety nine, and the five X three seventy nine. Yep. Yeah, but still, I think good Nexus price points. Um, both phones will support Google Fi. The six P is five point seven inches. The five X is uh, five point two inches. Um, really focused on the camera on the six P, and uh, it looks to be a very impressive uh, camera. Although nowadays it's software that makes these cameras good, so it's hard to tell from pure hardware numbers. 12.3 megapixels. It's a Sony sensor with 1.55 micron pixel. That's the biggest pixel uh, in its class. <laughs> I just invented a new phrase. Uh, <laughs> no OIS, but they said you don't need OIS because of some of the things they've done in uh, hardware and software to improve low light performance. We'll see. Android 6 on all the new devices, Marshmallow, and that is available. At, at Marshmallow, by the way, will be available next week for all uh, recent Nexus devices, including the uh, Nexus 6, 7, 9, and the Nexus Player. Um, Pre-order soon. I should... I'm Starting good. today. I'm refreshing. Nothing yeah, Nothing yet. Nothing? Okay. Just give us... Actually, don't give <laughs> us yet. a heads up. Just wink or tug just your wink. ear so that I can get in there. <laughs> I'll flash the lights behind you, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think? Uh, this is what uh, I think pretty much what we expected. Uh, Gina, any were you surprised by anything or excited by anything? I think the new some of the new marshmallow features look pretty good. Yeah, you know, I came into this really excited. I wanted to get the 5X. I, I wanted to go a little a little smaller, but I got to say, uh, they really sold the, the 6P to me. Um, part of it was that they were saying, look, you know, this is this is a, a 5.7 inch display, but it's really kind of the size of a 5.5 inch device. It sounds like the 6P is just this really premium device. I, I, I the camera is really important to me. I have a small child. I really thought about mm -hmm. buying the iPhone just mm -hmm. to just because the iPhone takes such great photos. So I'm thinking I might go 6P instead of 5X and stay with the, you know, go with the, the bigger phone. Um, the Chromecast is really cool. I love the new design. I Again, I'm troubled that it hangs off the back of your TV, but whatever. That's just me being a crazy wire person. Uh, and uh, the Pixel... The Pixel is was a little bit weird for me. It's really interesting that the Pixel brand has sort of crossed over from Chrome OS to Android. I mean, Google's constantly sort of playing, you know, on the interplay between Android and Chrome OS. Um, and it's not for me because I just don't know what I particularly would use it for. But if I was the sort of business person who had to make spreadsheets and deal with email and flew a lot, I would I'd be interested in the Pixel C. Yeah, I really wonder about the tablet market. It just seems like a market that it hasn't lived up to its potential or maybe has already lived up to its potential and it's on its way back down. Russell Holly, Android Central, what do you think? 
I think that it's it's a really hard push. You know, we, we had tablets and I think the problem that we had with tablets when they initially came out was that no one was really willing to admit that these were just media consumption devices. Right. Uh, and, and so now, you know, we've had uh, a couple of years now of all these companies telling us that these these can be productivity devices if you work hard and believe in yourself. Um, and and it never really turned out to be the case. And and so now we've seen, you know, from Apple and Google and, and or, I'm sorry, Apple and Microsoft and now Google, uh, that what it takes to make these productivity machines is, in fact, a keyboard. Uh, and so I, I think we're kind of looking at a, a new generation uh, of, of these tablets that could almost be considered different from what we've seen for the last couple of years in that, that they are finally taking the productivity part seriously. Yeah. Really thrilled to see uh, USB-C <clears throat> on all these new Google devices uh, and I think Google's taking great leadership here. I I, I, uh, I feel like in a couple of years, that will be the connector you'll see on everything for a lot of reasons. It really is a capable connector, um, al although we don't know if all those capabilities will be uh, used in the new Google devices. Also find it interesting that Google is, is, is with this Chrome Music device, really taking aim at... Uh, uh, a, a new market, a market that has been owned by the high-end Sonos speakers for so long, the ability to stream internet music and uh, content plus content from your de your Android devices and, uh, and iPhone devices, we should add, uh, to existing speakers in your home, including powered speakers and your stereo. And the price point is very aggressive. If you've got existing, and it makes sense actually to do it this way, because if you've got speakers already, you don't want to go out and buy uh New speakers just to have this internet connection. Mm -hmm. um, Thirty-five bucks. I think they'll sell quite a few of both the new Chromecast. Uh, they did say they'd sold twenty million Chromecast units. It's been quite a successful product already for uh, for this kind of product. I mean, and partially because let's be honest, it's it's such an impulse buy, right? I mean, thirty-five dollars is you know you, you spend that much on, on going out to dinner very easily, right? That price point is irresistible. Of course, I'm going to throw a couple of those in my cart. Uh, but it also is a great product, and so, uh, it's, neat, it's neat to see, you know, just plug this into any device and turn it into inter in, an internet-connected device. What, uh, the new Chromecast is now up on the store, leaves the warehouse in one to two business days. So oh. I'm ordering, you can only order two, but I'm I'm ordering those right now. Um, don't know if anything else new is on the site, but uh, thank you to the chat room for sending us along that uh, link. Um Nexus this 5. The silent is, sound. Yes, yeah, the go. silent okay. sound of people Everybody refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to store.google.com slash product slash Nexus underscore 6P, you can choose from aluminium, spelled, by the way, aluminium. Aluminium. Graphite or frost. I think I'm, and then choices in this, in the memory are 32, 64, and 128. I think we've all agreed now that, that 64 is kind of the sweet spot. No need to go. Farther. And the Nexus Protect, which I thought was also interesting, and basically an Apple Care, they say leaves warehouse, at least what I'm seeing is leaves warehouse in four to five weeks. So that is not going to be out uh, real quickly. Um, and when you order it, you get, as they mentioned, um, a $50 Google Play credit and 90 days of Google Play music. Um, is the tablet up? <laughs> I have a feeling uh, the chat room is really... <laughs> are really Chat room, you're amazing. getting those those links up for us. What's happened is, it, and this happens has happened before, if you deep link into the store, sometimes you can see stuff. I know this has happened before. You can see stuff before it's it's visible on the front page. So it's not visible to me on the front page yet. But deep links do seem to work. Yeah, my uh, 6P order has been placed. Oh, so you decided to get the big one. I did. I went with the big one. Interesting. I totally, completely went back on what I said, but yes. <laughs> uh, you know what's, uh, that, that Google's so great because you, they already have your information, it's a little, yeah, it's, it's a, almost a little too easy to buy it. I just did the same easy. just it by is. clicking a button. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there you go. A couple of new, uh, a couple of new products. They are also offering cases uh, for the devices, folio and uh, and uh, slim cases. Um, I think it's very interesting to uh, to see the. Um, uh, the price points. I feel like this is Google acknowledging that maybe they overcharged for the last Nexus 6, that the they, six. they need to offer something aggressive. It's also an acknowledgement, since they don't have a payment plan, uh, people now are aware of how much phones cost. These phones are not subsidized. Google doesn't allow you to spread it out over two years like Apple does. So they can't charge a huge amount of money. I think that's a very good price 
for a 64 gig uh, device. 5X is up too. Yeah. Yep. All, all yep. the products are now up, but it looks like you have to deep link. But $549 is for the 64 gig version of the 6P. That's that's really, I think, a pretty aggressive price. $499 for the 32 gig. So they only charge 50 bucks more to double the memory. Uh, double it again at 650 Much more like a... That's, that's, that's base iPhone pricing. Uh, I think for the next is an incredible amount more storage. It's, like it's, yeah, it's really impressive. Yeah, uh, it also uh, the Nexus Protect really is a direct uh, challenge to uh, Apple Care Plus with uh, device protection, accidental uh, damage protection. But I will have to look. Uh, maybe it'll say on the web page um, about deductibles. You know, Apple has a deductible. It's not uh, free to get a replacement if you break your phone. Um, Nexus Protect. Learn more. Let me look at this. Gives you two years of protection that extends, in other words, the one year to two years. Replacement. Uh, what's nice is a replacement is mailed to you immediately. App Apple, of course, has stores you can do the replacement at, but without the stores, Google needs to do that. The coverage stays with your phone even if you switch carriers or give your phone to someone else. Claims nice. are subject to a $79 deductible and up to two incidents of accidental damage over the two years. It's comparable to Apple Care, Apple Care Plus. Well, some, uh, I think, pretty exciting stuff. It's a shame that, the, and now you know why Apple keeps everything so close to the vest. It's a shame. It, doesn't, it takes some of the excitement out of it um, when you already know everything that's going to come out. <laughs> you can, uh, by the way, order up to 10 Chromecast audio devices uh, at a time. <laughs> so maybe I'll just get a few. They're so cheap. Just get some extras in a variety of colors yeah. all over the house. Those leave the warehouse also in one to two business days, so those are available now. Any other thoughts, Gina Trapani? I know you're busy ordering stuff. I know I'm here. I'm, Not yeah, to slow I'm down your shopping. To my, <laughs> to my car here. <laughs> All good stuff. I'm really I'm, I'm excited about the Google Photos uh, updates too. The the fam easier family sharing and the and uh, the uh, you know Google Play Music. I had actually wound up I wound up canceling my subscription, so I don't know if this means I get it back. With, you know by by buying the phone, uh, but interested in in the different profiles across one Google Play Music yeah. account as well. I'm excited. I'm really excited about my new phone. I wanted to get here sooner. I got it's going to be shipped like the end of October or something. Yeah. So I don't know. I was don't yours, know. Gonna, was I'm yours four to five weeks as well? It was three to four mine. So I don't know. Oh man, I, I, did I get in late? Yeah. Maybe, and it, it, yeah. By the way, I'm looking at the 5X right now. It's two to three weeks. So if you if you were in a hurry to see maybe marshmallow, I should cancel my order and go with the small no, one again. <laughs> you don't want I can't do it. No. Um, yeah. No. All really cool devices. And and I kind of Leo, I want you to get the Pixel C because I want to I want to hear uh, what you think of it because yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bite on that one, but I want to hear a good good review. I have a lot of tablets and I don't find much use for them. I'm sorry to say. Especially yeah. now with big phones, it just doesn't seem like something uh, one needs so much. It's or true. One, you know, it's true. The phone does the does the job. Uh, Russell Holly, you've been playing with Marshmallow. Are we all going to be thrilled to get it next week on our existing device, uh, Nexus devices? Yeah, I think one of the 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 things to keep in mind here is that it looks really similar to what we've seen so far with Lollipop. You know, visually, a lot of the buttons are in the same place, so there's not going to be a whole lot of relearning going on. Uh, but the things that we've seen, especially on stage today, where we've got actual demonstrations of things like app linking, uh, this takes the, the things that Google was really strong about, which was being able to share from app to app instead of having, you know, these kind of individual boxes for things uh, and really steps it up in, in an impressive way. And on everything that I've tested it on so far, it does actually deliver on the promises of battery life, unlike some of the previous releases. I don't currently see the uh, pixel on the store. If the chat room will send me a link, <laughs> just keep searching. Uh, but the Pixel C is not, as far as I know, not yet on the store. They did say later this year, so I might have time for my checking account to recover before I have to order a Pixel C just for Gina. I was searching. That's why I was distracted. No, that's okay. <laughs> Mike Elgin is on the line with us. He was at. Yeah, he's the, getting on the line. He's getting on line with us. He was at the event and. Uh, I don't know if he's had a chance to see the products uh, in person. I don't know if they had a demo uh, area or not. Mike, are you there? No, not yet. Not yet? Okay. Uh, I just ordered 5X, you guys. I can't stop. You did? I did. I did. <laughs> Why? I did. I'm going to cancel one of these. I just don't know which uh, yet. I just wanted to make sure that I <laughs> smart <laughs> woman. to be in line. Yeah. I needed to be in line. I'm being really selfish, you guys. Sorry. And I should point out, they're still selling the old Nexus 6. 
no price drop. They dropped the price on that about a month ago. Um, yeah. But but at five forty nine for sixty four gigs, it's exactly the same price as the six P. It seems like uh, if you're really paying attention, you should get the six P. Uh, yeah, that's that seemed yeah. like the product to, to get. So and I'm all about the protect. I got the Nexus Protect. Did you get the I'm Protect? In. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. a good deal. I think the deductible is a little lower than Apple's. I'm not sure. The, roughly, though, the same terms as Apple Care Plus. Oh, um, the front page of the store just refreshed for me. Has it me. refreshed? All right. Yeah. Yes, I see it now. Yeah, I do not see the Pixel, uh, but I do see the 5X and 6P yeah. and the yeah. Chromecast and Chromecast Audio. I, I, I really like the image, the way they did the kind of the headphone look for the Chrome Audio, uh, Chromecast Audio. Yeah. Nexus 6 has been 349 on Amazon. That's right, for uh, about a month. Mike Elgin's on the phone with us. Hey, Mike. Hey, Leo. So uh, was there a demo of any of these products, or you were just unceremoniously cast out as we were? No, we got a demo. We got our hands on uh, with uh, all of the devices except the Chromecast devices. We saw all the, the phones and the tablet. And I got to say that the, the star of the show here today, as far as I'm concerned, is the Pixel C. That thing is awesome. Interesting. What particularly do you like about it? Well, uh, the coolest thing, I think, is that I, I really believe in the tablet plus a physical keyboard model. Of course, the, uh, the iPad Pro is following that model. and This is their answer to the iPad Pro. One of the cool things about it is the use of magnets to attach the, the keyboard with the, to the tablet. And in fact, when you attach the keyboard to the bottom of the tablet when you're not using the, the keyboard, it charges the keyboard inductively so you never have to think about charging the keyboard yeah very cool stuff yeah and the screen sounds particularly nice what do you think did you actually saw it, it? looked it, yes and it looked beautiful yeah uh i also uh, you know it's, it's it's difficult to really get a sense of uh what it's going to be like every day using the screen but it, just in the demo and the hands-on it looked really good the thing that i really like you know as a writer somebody who spends all day typing I love that keyboard. That keyboard is just like the Chromebook Pixel keyboard, which is a great keyboard. Uh, it felt really great to use. It didn't feel very small, even though it, it actually is smaller in person than it looked, uh, you know, when they were demo demonstrating it on a stage. So I think that this, this Pixel C is a real winner, and it's going to be a, an object of, of, uh, of desire for, for everybody who likes Android tablets. Um, and so it was really interesting. I also talked to the, the guy who was uh, running the demo, don't recall his name, but he was talking about the mission of the Pixel team because I asked him, you know, why are you, it is an Android device? Why isn't this under the Nexus brand and so on? And he said that the Pixel, you know, he said what we already know pretty much, which is that the Pixel team exists to lead the industry and have the sort of idealized products what Google thinks would be the highest end products. Truth is, I think it's the devices that Google uh, staff themselves want to use, uh, and they, they build it for themselves and then sell it to the rest of us. Uh, but, that, but the Pixel C was very, very cool. A real opportunity right now for Google with the phones as well, because the world is moving toward this kind of pay it outright, no longer subsidized phone model. The world has been there all along. The U.S. is finally moving uh, to that. You know, you know what it costs, and they're offering what looks to be absolute flagship capabilities at considerably uh, lower prices. Did you get a chance to play with the 6P at all? Yeah, it just feels super premium. I mean, you know, it's a 499 phone. starts at 499 and up from there, uh, depending on uh, storage. Uh, and uh, as you said, both unlocked. It just feels like a really high-end phone. This is clearly going to be viewed as a competitor to the iPhone 6 Plus and also the high-end Samsung phones. Um, just a really beautiful uh, device in every way. Felt great. The fingerprint uh, reader just felt really natural, to, you know, to unlock it super fast uh, in every way. So I think this is a, uh, I, you know, we, I, I've been concerned that Google had kind of lost its mojo a bit with the Nexus line. And I think this, uh, both these phones bring, bring them back uh, into um, being real contenders uh, for the real fans of Android devices. Uh, it's just a, it's just a really, really great phone. It doesn't uh, really, really powerful. I think, I think uh, Apple doesn't have much to fear, but Samsung's got to actually uh, just be terrified because uh, the, everybody the complain about Samsung. They make great hardware. The complaint is always the software. Finally, Google making competitive hardware uh, with a pure marshmallow experience. Pure marshmallow sounds delicious. Yeah, I, <laughs> they really are. And, and one of the things that I don't, I don't know if you talked about this uh, during the, the, the stream. 
But it's clear to me that they really got a lot of ideas from their brief ownership of the Motorola. Of Motorola. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this is, you know, this this Android sensor hub sounds right out of the Motorola playbook where they yeah. offload um, sensor data from the central processor and this boosts the battery. There's lots of stuff in, 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 uh, in Marshmallow that boosts the battery. So I'm really excited to get some independent testing of what the battery life on these devices is going to be. I think it's going to be great uh, because of these, uh, these features. And um, Yeah, if I had to pick a single other- reason to use an iPhone, it's for battery life. Uh, but this, yeah. with a thir- 3450 milliamp hour battery in the uh, new 6P and all of these uh, battery saving features, uh, this could be a monster. I hope it is. Yeah. Yeah, and the other thing that has to be pointed out is that uh, Apple has been really stingy at giving, uh, you know, well, they've they, they prevented it, uh, from giving third-party app makers access to that fingerprint reader, whereas Google's like, yeah, right. uh, open for business. Uh, just, right. you know, build, build, build it right in. In fact, almost everything that they announced, they said, yeah, this, is ava- this stuff is available to third-party app developers. Sounds like a, a, they're using that as a real competitive uh, uh, differentiation. Russell, one thing I don't see on the 6P is uh, wireless charging. You mentioned early on you like the wireless charging on the Moto 360. Uh, are you surprised? I'm not surprised because we had we had heard that this was a metal back, and that's just one of the consequences of having a, a phone with a metal back. So it is disappointing uh, that we're not going to have. This is the first Nexus uh, pair of Nexus phones that is not going to have wireless charging uh, since I think the the Nexus S. Uh, and and that includes the the tablets that had been released. You know, the wireless charging has been something that Google has pushed really, really hard uh, for for a while now. So it's it's a little disappointing and, and kind of surprising that they didn't wait to see some of the stuff that Qualcomm had been talking about earlier this year, yeah. where wireless charging could work with metal casing. Um, but but obviously something just didn't pan out. It is uh, equipped with the Qualcomm processor, the sec the two point one version of the eight ten, which is really a beast of a processor. Uh, and uh, that means it can do probably, I'm sure it can, do Qualcomm Quick Charge. The charger they're shipping with the 6P is a 15-watt charger, 3-amp charger. So uh, that indicates probably very fast charging. Um, good battery life, fast charging on a USB-C connector. It's not wireless, but uh, it might be better than uh, better than nothing. Uh, Mike, it's disappointing, but yeah, it is disappointing. The thing- Fingerprint sensor. I'm so excited to never have to type my last pass password in again. If it yeah. really almost never fails, yeah. that is the thing that I spend the most time Huge. on my phone. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, in fact, I use it all the time on devices that have fingerprint. And I've now, I'm, I'm an absolute devotee. I would not buy a phone uh, without. And at this point, you got to have all day battery life, fingerprint. I used to say OIS. We'll see if they can get away without OIS in the 6P. And you got to have a great camera. Uh, it's not face unlock. Oh, uh, the, the imprint Nexus imprint is is much better than face, face unlock's unlock. not a good idea. Not yeah, a good idea. which obviously didn't pan out. Mike, what else? What are your other observations? What else you see in there? Well, one of the things that we don't know, and I, I tried to hunt down the the uh, the Chromecast uh, folks uh, during the demo time, and they they were they were not uh, available. But uh, all of this opening up of Chromecast and Chromecast audio to people that come to your house sounded really great especially the Chromecast audio stuff where, you know, you can, you know, somebody else launches a song and then you can go and skip yeah. that song. And, and as they joked, you know, and they cause some fights, but I don't see what's to prevent the neighbor from playing music on your speakers and, and, and changing your songs and stuff like that. That um, wouldn't be good. Uh, that, that would not be good. And, uh, <laughs> and so th- that's a, that's an object of, uh, to, for, for follow up, And we can hopefully find that out uh, today at some point. But, um, yeah, I just think in general they're they're once again taking the high road on all this hardware. I think the Chromecast uh, updates, especially the updates to the app itself, uh, are really really powerful. They're really matching Apple almost feature for feature. They do it in a casual way. Of course, every every feature that Apple announces is is a, a monumental, right? It just is this huge feature. And Google says, yeah, we do that too. We do this. We do that. We let you search across devices. We, we, we show you all the apps that support Chromecast, and you can play right from the app. Um, I thought that was really, really a powerful um, response to not just Apple, I guess, Apple TV, but, but also Amazon Fire TV and some of the other competitors out there. I, I just think that they, they, uh, they're coming out of this announcement just having a, a very strong position in all the areas that, they, that, that they're hitting now. The, those phones are going to make a big impact. Of course, the tablet is going to really change things. I think the Pixel C 
and and the Chromecast and Chromecast audio products are are, are uh, you know it's just really really uh, well done, well executed. They've really perfected what they've already got out there. Uh, and of course, this is the second version of the Chromecast, so it's a big it's a big move forward. I think it's going to be very different and much easier to use for uh, people who are already using the Chromecast and. And if people can understand it, if they haven't used a Chromecast, if they can understand the benefits, I think they'll enjoy it as well. But I, I just think this was a, a, a really great great announcement for, for Google and puts them in a really good position uh, competing with Apple and the others in the market. Yeah, and as I mentioned, Samsung should probably be shivering in their boots. Uh, and I also think Sonos is maybe a little bit in trouble here if they can get the, the uh, all-room mode to work uh, uh, synchronously without latency. Uh, which they say will come later this year. That could be a huge deal if you can, for 35 bucks, um, you know, get the capabilities of a Sonos even more than a Sonos um, on your sound yeah. system. That's pretty exciting. And of course, they Sonos would be very wise to get to the front of this parade and explicitly support Chromecast audio because, yeah. uh, like you say, that this is this is this is seen as an alternative uh, to something like a Sonos. If you've got a lot of speakers playing simultaneously the sound is going to be loud and, and clear and it's going to sound pretty good right they need to come out and say yeah we're the best we're the best chromecast audio uh, uh, uh client speaker whatever you want to call it uh so i don't know if they're going to do that whether they're going to do that i also think i also wanted to point out one other thing which reminded me because of course you and i uh love the amazon echo uh they they had an interesting feature in the pixel c which is that they said that they have four microphones which somehow give you across the room access to the Pixel C, meaning that you can use a Pixel C uh -huh. uh, like a like a like an Amazon Echo. Yeah, yeah they did the show the array room. mic, that, and uh, that's of course I wasn't thinking, but of course you'll be able to say, okay, you know who to your Pixel C. <laughs> you yeah. know who? It's like Voldemort. <laughs> I can't say <laughs> that he who shall not be named. <laughs> Incidentally, thanks to Bama Fan in our chat room, uh, we now know that you can go to pixel.google.com. And there's a page set up that uh, talks about the features of the Pixel C. You can't order one yet, but you can sign up to uh, get a notification. Um, actually, there's not a whole, this is a kind of a scant page. There's mostly just pictures. I was hoping to see more text. But it does look like a very interesting device. And, and, and I think, Mike, you just convinced me to get one because of that array mic feature. This could be a stealth echo in the house. Yeah. And, and nobody does yeah. better, frankly, than Google Now. Uh, at voice, uh, interpreting voice, and giving you the information you're looking for. It really is still the leader of the pack. Yeah. Mike Elgin, we'll let you go. He uh, was just at the uh, event and uh, reporting live from, where was the event? It's in a disreputable neighborhood. Well, it's not that disreputable. <laughs> it's in a kind of a random neighborhood in San Francisco. It's, it's some kind of, I don't know what this place is, but... Uh, they had a, you know, a, a pretty small room that they spent a lot of money gussying up for the event, and then in separate demo rooms. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what this place. How many is, people but, were, yeah. were? How many people were in attendance? It was all press, and I would guess there was probably fifty. Not, it didn't look like a big room on the TV. Yeah. Yeah. No. Interesting. Well, Mike Elkin, thank you for being there, and thank you for giving us a report direct from the scene. Always my pleasure. All right. And we'll see you uh, later. I want to. I guess we can wrap up because we're going to get ready for Mac Break Weekly, and I think we've covered it all and we've ordered it all. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I bought. Yeah. I bought five of the audio players because I'm a. I'm a. I'm a Sonos bigot. I have Sonos in every every room of the house, um, and I'm very interested. I'll probably use the optical cable to connect it to my uh, two hi-fi systems that are currently on Sonos. Um, of course, you have to go buy speakers. The thirty-five bucks just covers the connector. But I think for a lot less than uh, what Sonos charges, I think they start at 500 bucks for the Sonos speakers, you could get a pretty good speaker. There's still a lot of questions. Can you do stereo pairing, for instance, uh, which Sonos will let you do? Sonos has a, a home entertainment setup where you can have a, a sound bar, a sub, and surrounds. Um, I doubt very much they'll be able to do that. But uh, for simply getting music into your room, it seems like a, a very affordable and uh, compelling choice. The Pixel would be a, will be an interesting product that we won't know more about that until later this year. They were very um, vague about the ship date for the Pixel C tablet and keyboard, although extremely impressive uh, engineering design, especially that magnetic latch for the keyboard and inductive charging for the keyboard, which is uh, interesting. It sounds like the Pixel C is actually a, a Qi charger in disguise. <laughs> Russell Holly, let you go back to work. I'm sure you have some filing to do.
I do have a few buttons to push on this keyboard here in front of me. <laughs> so much, so much, uh, so great to have you here. I really appreciate it. Contributing editor for Android Central, AndroidCentral.com. Uh, always welcome guest on uh, All About Android. And uh, I still see on Google Plus, you haven't abandoned the platform. I haven't. I'm a big fan still. Yeah. They didn't mention anything at all. About Google Not Plus. at all. And, you know, it hasn't, Google Plus hasn't been uh, as part of the Play Services update. Uh, new phones starting with the Note 5, I think. Yeah. Uh, Google Plus is not one of the pre installed apps anymore. So, yeah. I think it's, it, oh. the end is coming. The end is not. I didn't realize that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. Thank you, Russell. Gina, oh boy, he said thank you. He, you know, no, that's the Irish goodbye. It's the new thing. Everybody's doing it. All the kids are doing it. <laughs> All right, I'm hovering over the button. I'm going to do the Irish goodbye. Gina, what did you buy? Just out of curiosity, did you, did you buy the little one and the big one? I bought the 5X, the 6P. I bought the Chromecast. I just texted my wife and said, I bought you a new phone, oh. honey. <laughs> And I, I don't Google, know which one she's going to get, but we'll see. I think you're going to like Google Fi. I don't know how T-Mobile and Sprint are in Brooklyn, but I've been very impressed by Google Fi. And, boy, the price is great. It starts with 20 bucks for all the voice and texting features, and then you just pay $10 a gigabyte, and you only pay for data you use. And I, I think Google's I think really – I think they've yeah. got a product. And, again, to, what we started the show with was do you lose a lot of Google Voice capabilities? And what I didn't realize is Google Voice is still there. You can't go to voice.google.com, but when you – Go to find.google.com. At the very bottom, there's a, a link for Google Voice in teeny tiny print. And when you go there, it's all still there, including the ability to add phones, to have multiple answering messages, to have groups, okay. all of the things, uh, you know, to screen calls, all of the things I thought I'd lost when I went to Google Fi. The only, there's a few features like uh, recording the call that you lose. And I don't, I, there's nothing I'm missing. So I actually I don't use that much. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you should take a look at it. I, 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 I will I'm not to, I don't mean to do an, a sell for Google. <laughs> Google. Fi. Yeah, no, I'm excited about Fi. <laughs> I, I mean, now, you know, now that I have a phone that'd be capable, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly going to, th you know, think about it and look into it. It for was, sure. it was hobbled when it was, you had to buy a, a Nexus six to use it. And this right. is, as, as it's a nice phone, but it's not the best phone out there by any means. Now that they have, three devices that will use Google Fi. I think it's a little bit more of a sensible, uh, or at least something people probably could look at. Um, I just can't believe i got to wait till October 23rd, it looks like, for, for the 5X <laughs> to get uh, that, that, that. That's what they're I'm hoping they're going to Zappos me and surprise me, you know, like yeah. a lot sooner. So They maybe do that sometimes. Sooner. Google does they do that do. sometimes. Yeah. They do. I, uh, so I'm, I bought, as you did, because I realized I need to get one of these as quickly as I can, and uh, both of them, and the 5X for me is November 4th, so... You may have to do a review for us. Ah, you might have all to right. come on all about Android or uh, or this week in Google and get us a little uh, sneak peek at your new phone. That would be wonderful. I will definitely do that. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for having me on today. This is really Great really to fun. Have you. Gina Trapani, MakerBase. Don't forget Maker. Bay.se. Great place to go if you're a maker or you know a maker or you listen or watch or do something with a maker. Add them to the maker base so that their entry is there and uh, people can find out more about them. It's really a great idea and we thank you for doing that. Thank you so much. Bye, Gina. Irish goodbye. Irish Have goodbye. Good watch. Let's watch. She's going to drop the mic <laughs> and go. Yeah. It's the new thing. All the kids are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Leo Laporte, and I do thank you uh, for joining us for our special coverage of the Google Nexus event. Uh, a pretty interesting, you know what I love it, is there's competition in this space. You want to see uh, these big companies coming up with really uh, competitive choices for you because the competition makes everybody better. And whether you're Android or iPhone, it's pretty clear that uh, the newest phones from both Google and Apple uh, are compelling choices. Uh, I, I look forward to giving you a review of everything as soon as my packages start arriving. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.